This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. My dog's been taken. Hello there. Very nice to meet you. Some texts and tweets and such from last night. Lucy in Ballam says, when Trump says he is the father of IVF, is he referring to in vitro fertilization or inflated valued firms? He's pretty good at fathering the latter. Don't be rude. This says, uh, I'm going to say you're very wrong. What? People will vote for Trump because they know they're going to get more money in their pocket, not because they're stupid. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you if you aren't a billionaire and you think you're going to get more money in your pocket during a Trump presidency, you are stupid. <coughs> this says, are you sure Trump and Vance are Republicans? They sound a bit Khmer Rouge to me. Year zero, anyone? Yeah, well, first you you got to take out all the professors, everyone with glasses. Don't want anybody uh, smart enough to question the dear leader. Because the dear leader is very, very smart. He, he's a, he is a very smart and intelligent person. Trust me, I'm like a smart person. I mean, he passed a test. And it was 30 or 35 questions. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult. Uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's woman, camera, TV. That's very good, Donnie. Very good. They were stunned. No, nobody gets it like you do. You're doing tremendously well. I'm doing great with black men. He's doing great with black men, Melania. I don't care. She's not that bothered. David in Islington says, I don't like the Beatles. I have a lovely black cat. <laughs> As though the two are in some way connected. I guess you'd have to have uh, listened to yesterday's show to figure out what that means. How can you not like the Beatles? That's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying, I don't like jazz. Put your hands down, people who say, yeah, yeah no, I don't like jazz. That is a ridiculous thing to say. I don't like the Beatles. I mean, I can understand why you would think that Octopus's Garden is a bit of a silly song, but Revolution? Come on! You know, Revolution, well, you know, uh-oh. Rock and roll! Michael in Wrexham says, Nick, I disagree. How about the Eagles? <laughs> I disagree. With what? I swear, people just text me during the course of the show in response to something I've just said, as though when I read their message an hour or even a day later, I'm going to have any idea what they're talking about. I disagree. <laughs> well, I disagree with your disagreement. This says, the USA election is like the Brexit vote, so close. When you look at our white, aged Brexit voters who are now bellyaching that there's not enough money for their winter fuel payments, their selective racist mind can't connect that our country is poorer because of their many years of experience on knowing better. <laughs> Any of that make sense? No. Not really, no. And this says, ABBA give the Beatles a run for their money on the whole family enjoyment front, surely. No. No, they don't. I mean, ABBA, are, you know, they're amusing and they have a few good songs. The Visitors is the best by uh, Country Mile, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, they, they don't have... They're a pop band. The Beatles were a rock band. Big difference, huge. Andrea says, our cat is eight years old, jet black, bright green eyes and adopted from Battersea. She photographs beautifully and never only shows up as a shadow. That photo nonsense is a myth. It isn't a myth. It was said by people who work at a cat's uh, protection home thing where people go and select a cat. You know, like they're uh, choosing a flavour of ice cream. I'll have that one. <laughs> and they uh, always walk, walk out and leave the black ones there because the black ones don't show up on selfies. They just look like shadows. Unless, the, you know, if the cat's got its eyes closed, you can't see the cat. And people don't like that. Very, very superficial. People don't like that. You know, people who want to be influencers. God. I, I'm very disappointed with the kids these days. I don't know about you, but, you know, kids used to want to do something, like be a bus conductor or a fire person, or they wanted to uh, play football or be a rock and roll star. Now they just want to be influenced. I want to go on holiday and be given free stuff. Oh, well, that's great. What's your backup plan in case that doesn't work for you? Oh, I'm going to win the lottery. Terrific. Best of luck. This says, Earth, wind and fire over the Beatles any time. 
what, can't you have both? And Earth, Wind and Fire doesn't even hold the candle to uh, the Beatles, not for the range of material and the amount of songs that they produced. I mean, it's just in the hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs that the whole world can sing. You cannot say that for Earth, Wind and Fire. I mean, they'd have a, an album of greatest hits at most. One single album, Earth, Wind and Fire, that the, 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 the world has a chance of even uh, jigging around to. Uh, no one about singing out loud. Malcolm, in, and, and by the way, I'm a, a late convert to the Beatles, really, because I always thought that they were um, uh, uh, over overvalued. What? Yes, I always thought that they were, you know, critically overvalued. Overvalued is not quite the word I'm going for, but I've got a block on what the word I'm actually trying to snatch out the air. I th um, over critically valued, overrated. <laughs> Coming in from next door who has made a tremendous contribution to the show so far, and we're not even ten minutes in. It's like a miracle oh. that he's paying attention. This says, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm in Bodmin says, Hey, Nick, that Jeff Bezos story, the editor-in-chief of the Washington Post has just resigned in protest at Jeff Bezos stopping the paper coming out for Kamala Harris. Yeah, I don't think it was the editor-in-chief. I think it was the uh, an editor-underling person, the uh, acting... Uh, some somebody or other, I don't know. A lot of people are um, cancelling their subscriptions to the Washington Post because they're undecided or pretending that they are. And anybody who has read the Washington Post for more than about 10 seconds will know that they're not undecided at all. They're, they're fully on board with Kamala Harris and um, don't want uh, Donito Mussolini anywhere near the uh, White House. Unless, uh, you know, in chains... But because Donald Trump does nothing but... He spends his life just go, getting back at people who he thinks have crossed him. There's an interview that um, Richard Branson did that uh, did the rounds um, uh, just the other day. I saw it again just the other day. And this is quite an old clip. And he said that he went to a, uh, a lunch with Donald Trump and it was one of the most dispiriting meetings he's ever had in his life because Donald Trump just spent the entire time telling him Richard Branson, how he was going to spend his uh, the, the rest of his uh, existence on Earth getting back at all the people that he thought that uh, had been mean and nasty to him. You know, like a baby. So, yeah, I can understand that business people would be uh, concerned about uh, saying nasty, mean things about Donald Trump, which basically is anything but crawling across the carpet on all fours and kissing his feet. Because he's, um, he, he's just a, a big, vengeful baby. It's like America is considering re-electing Cartman as president. It's like, never mind about Springfield, where they're eating the dogs and the uh, cats, and I believe they're eating the people too. They're eating the people that live there, and this is what's happening in our country. It's a total disgrace. Yeah, never mind about Springfield, uh, Springfield South Park is where America is uh, actually living right now, and they're thinking of electing Cartman again. Like it wasn't bad enough the first time. Hey, America! <laughs> Wake up, it's later than you think. This text says, If I was American, I would definitely vote for Kamala Harris, but she does talk like Janice from Friends. Oh, my God! So nasal, said that text. I know, it's, it's very difficult to choose between uh, a person who laughs funny and um, Adolf Hitler with jokes. It's, it's such a difficult decision to make. This says, Nick, please don't cross the US off your visit list. It's, it's off already. I cannot go to America again. It, they're just too, I mean, it's just too dark. I mean, it's like crazy land over there, 50%. 50% of the people in America want to re-elect the world's worst human being, and 70% of them think that he won the last election, but it was snatched away from him by the deep state. I'll sum that argument up for you. <laughs> yeah, so no, I, I cannot go to uh, America again, not on holiday, no, not until they sort themselves out. <laughs> sort yourself out, America, really. I mean, take a, take a good long look at yourself, what you like. Greater than 50% of us is, are sane, says the rest of that text, and hate Trump. We ju are just thwarted by our backwards electoral college. Yeah, and you're thwarted by the uh, backwards people who mostly reside in the middle of the country. Those people.
the ones with no teeth and mullets. No offence. And finally, blimey, I've done very well. All of them? Oh, but I haven't, though, because already I've got five pages of text from this show. So finally, from last night, before I plough into tonight's, Jill in Leeds says, Hi, Nick, my grandma had a good saying, which was, it's not always dark at six. It stayed with me forever, says Jill in Leeds. Let's just ponder that for a while. It's not always dark at six. What does that mean? I mean, literally, it is, of course, not always dark at six. For about three months of the year, four tops, it's, it is dark at six, and for the rest it isn't. But why is that a saying? That's just an observation. It's not always dark at six. I mean, a better observation or a better saying might be, it's darker before it gets light. I sort of screwed that up a bit, but you know what I mean. It's, the, uh, it, it's always darker before the dawn, which I'm not sure is true. Just by comparison, perhaps, it might seem that way. But I don't really get that, Jill, and uh, neither do I understand why it stayed with you forever. Is it, has it stayed with you forever because you didn't understand it? You're still pondering what it means? My grandma had a good saying, which was, it's not always dark at six. Stayed with me forever, says Jill in Leeds. It's affected her so much that she wanted to share it. Well, we appreciate that, uh, Jill, but um, maybe you should to contact your uh, grandma if, he, if she is still available and ask her what she meant by that, because I have got absolutely no idea. But it fits right in on this show. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Hot air. H-O-T-A-I-R. Oh, 0345 <laughs> 6060 973. Uh, let's see now. I have a uh, selection of calls to take. Um, I'll do it in the order in which they came. Kentish Town. Hello, Andy. Hi. Andy. Um, you moved on quite a bit since, you know, when I was going to talk about, um, unfortunately, but it was um, about cats. Oh, yeah, cats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have a cat who's 24. 24 years old. <laughs> That's a very mm, old sweet. cat, isn't it? Yeah, she doesn't yeah. do too much, Nick. Doesn't do too much. But um, but she's been... So this, I'm going to give you a really brief story and no homework. So she was the 13th of 13. And the 13th she's... cat from the 13th cat. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. 13th cat on one cat that had a litter of 13. She was the thir okay, thirteenth cat out of the litter of thirteen. Right, got it. Okay. That's a that's a lot exactly. of cats. Do cats normally it, lay that many eggs? I have. <laughs> I have no idea, but I didn't see any eggshells, so I, no. I'm, really, I'm really not sure. Right, really not sure. Well, the, the cat but, eats the eggshells when the cat um, pops out when the little kittens pop out the eggs. Any any form. Yeah, I don't think they, when they're thirteenth, though. I don't think there's any there's any eggshells left. Right. I, I hope you're making notes, uh, kids, because there there will be a test on this afterwards. Yeah. Educational. Anyway, thirteenth of thirteenth. Yeah. So uh, then uh, I got a dog. You got a dog. And yeah, how did the cat feel about long. that? <laughs> no, she's gone now. She's twenty-four, Nick. Come on. I'm getting confused. You you got a cat that's the 13th... I had a cat. I had a cat. The 13th cat she's out of the 13th. 13th. Okay. Yeah. And then you got a dog. And she lived at 24 and then passed away. Oh, you don't still so, have the cat. Well, Of course, she, she'd be like 30 now. Well, how do I know that? All well, you I told thought, me was that the cat was 24. I, I thought you'd want to know, because you're talking about cats. Yes. I, I realize you'd, yeah, anyway, so now I have a dog. Now you've got a dog. How old's the dog? Uh, four. Four, right, four years old. Yeah. <laughs> And where in the litter did the dog come? Oh, okay. What? Pardon? And uh, which, um, the dog was born to another dog, and how many in the litter? And, uh, three. Um, which, three. Okay, three. Only right. three. And Only three. Three of third. Much mm -hmm. safer, right? Third of, third of three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, second of three, Nick. Second of three. Okay, so is this going to improve as the story goes along, or...? Um... um 
No. No. <laughs> well, I'm glad that we found out relatively early on in the conversation. I mean, it only took, what, what, about six, seven hours to get to the point at which we found out that, no, this story is not going to improve. Oh, thanks very much, Andy. As soon as you uh, come up with another story, then call another show. Appreciate that. Tarek in Chertsey says, I'm really not happy about the clocks going back tonight, and therefore, out of protest, I've decided not to comply. And they can't make me. I have decided to continue with summertime. At least it will still be light for me at 4 p.m. Having said that, can you please adjust your show next week to my time? <laughs> Thanks in advance, says Tarek in uh, Chertsey. Yes, of course. In fact, I'll just come here on Friday and Saturday evening. I'll get here early, and you just give us a ring and tell me when you want me to start. How does that sound? I wonder how that whole cat and dog uh, story ended up, by the way. Uh, we'll never know. Lawrence in Croydon says, As I no longer believe in dragons and princes bringing slippers, I have decided to put my solution for the Tories' mountain of debt left for the incoming government. We reward the king for his excellent work by gifting him until his dying days a choice of either Sandringham, Balmoral, Windsor, St James or Buckingham Palace. We sell all of the others off or confiscate them for social housing or for asylum seekers' accommodation. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm not going to stand in your way if that's, uh, if that's the plan, Lawrence. There was a very interesting article that was written by the ex-editor uh, of The Guardian in, um, it was The Independent, I think, about the royal finances, and it's absolutely eye-opening. I might give you a, a taste of that later, if you're lucky. What a silly country this is. We just gave a man a 50% pay rise to £124 million a year, and he makes something of the order of 60 million quid in his um, so-called private income. And then volunteers to pay some tax on some of it. Well, we, uh, we appreciate it, Your Majesty. Thank you. God. And we're bowing and scraping and, uh, you know, thinking we're lucky to have him. <laughs> the whole country's gone insane. This says, Nick, I have been corrected. My wife told me today that there was indeed a cheddar cheese mixed in with them. Oh. Yeah, we had that whole cottage pie incident uh, yesterday, do you remember? Mmm. Yes, uh, this bloke's wife had produced the most marvellous cottage pie and she had uh, sprinkled parmesan cheese on the top of it. Mmm. Mmm. And I suggested that what might make it better would be to uh, include cheddar cheese mixed in with the mash and parmesan on top of the cottage pie and then pop it in the oven. It'd be all uh, nice and, uh, you know, dark and crispy and umami all over it. But he said that uh, she went one louder than that. Not only did she mix uh, cheddar cheese in with the mash, but she also put mozzarella along with the parmesan on top of the cottage pie. Mozzarella. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel about that. Mozzarella along with parmesan on top of the... So basically it was a big dish of cheese with some potato and you managed to squeeze in a morsel of meat. Mozzarella on a cottage pie. I don't know about that. Doesn't mozzarella belong on a pizza? I think so. Ahmed emails, I just got my son a battery-powered bike so he can come home uh, and go to school himself. He's so lazy and he keeps asking for lifts. I'm trying to motivate him to use the bike. Yesterday he overheard you saying that all kids get driven to school nowadays. Thanks a lot, you... <laughs> well, that took me by surprise. Takes a nasty swerve right at the end here. Prepare yourself. He says, yesterday he overheard you saying that all the kids get driven to school these days. Thanks a lot, you Corbyn-loving, sandal-wearing, wokey-cokey. You believe that? Okie dokie. I don't come here to get insulted. I can get insulted at home. 0345 6060 973. Luton. Hello, Jay. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening. Yes, Jay. Nick, how are you? I am great, uh, mate. Yeah, in regards to Trump, I think... Uh, I don't want him to win, but I think it will be good for business. Like, <laughs> good for, for you. Good for, oh, for me, yeah, absolutely. You, yeah. Yeah. Because, so uh, I mean, to... Kamala Harris, what what material can I get from Kamala Harris? Boring! I mean, it's absolutely nothing at all. She's as boring as uh, Skia, Skia Starmer. 
<laughs> yes, it will be. And I think he's on the verge of uh, declaring that he's a re- uh, mixed race just to uh, to win all the undecided voters right now. <laughs> Donald because, Trump is going to declare uh, mixed race, a parentage, and, right. And, and, and I think people will believe him because looking at his skin colour, he yeah. looks mixed race. Uh, yeah, he's like then, half white, half uh, Oompa Loompa, yeah. And, and whenever he has speeches, I think uh, his team just laughing there at the background, saying like all the supporters believe what he said. Yeah. Have you seen his ramblings recently? I mean, uh, it's just crazy what he talks about. Yeah, it is crazy. And, he, and now he's so upset that people are calling him crazy that he, he now calls it the weave, in which he goes uh, through about 26 unrelated <laughs> um, sentences and uh, then, then remembers what he was initially supposed to be talking about, uh, which uh, is that uh, people are taking the cats and the dogs, or he's done more for religion than anybody else, or babies get killed in some states after birth. Right now, in a number of states, the laws allow a baby to be born from his or her mother's womb in the ninth month. It is wrong it has to change. Yeah, it's wrong and it has to change that babies uh, are born in the ninth month of uh, pregnancy. Yeah, that's one of his weaves. But uh, what I don't understand, I mean, I, I used to like Elon Musk before he opened his mouth. I, yeah. I, used, to, I used to love him, because, not love him, but I thought he was a great, uh, uh, I mean, a businessman. But after seeing him jumping up and down at the rallies, at Trump's mm. rallies, yeah. I think he's just gone a bit crazy right a li- now. A little bit Looney Tunes, yeah. And he wants to be in the government. That's why he's just probably supporting Trump. And he knows. I don't know. Can he become a president? Uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he could buy. He could buy a country and go be president there. But I, I think um, his uh, parentage uh, marks him. Uh, strikes him out from being the president of the United States of America. Yeah. So it's a big he, no. But he can. He will be a vice president, probably, if yeah, uh, Donald no. Trump... Uh, I, mean, no, I wouldn't think so. If Donald Trump gets elected to the White House, I think that it's uh, curtains for Donald Trump because uh, J.D. Vance is going to declare him um, in, uh, certifiably insane and uh, J.D. Vance and the billionaire uh, tech bros behind him are going to take over America and run it like a business. And at that point, then watch out, America, <laughs> because you're in big trouble. Huge. AJ, got to go, but thanks for that. 0345 6060 973. This text says, Nick, I remember you telling the story about black cats getting overlooked, so we bought a, we brought home a beautiful black cat from a shelter because of this. He's adorable. Oh. There you are, you see, I'm helping. They brought home a beautiful black, black cat from a shelter because of this. This says, uh, Nick, did you deign to watch Donald Trump's interview with Joe Rogan? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. No, it was three hours long. Nobody watched it all. I bet Joe Rogan didn't watch it all. God, can you imagine sitting and uh, listening to uh, that um, dribble for three blooming hours? Don't be rude. I mean, just no. I've heard everything that that man has got to say. It's just one big babyish whine. And, and, and you don't even need to take my word for it. I am the most fabulous whiner. I, I, and I'm a whiner and I keep whining and whining. Yeah, every, t- every time he tells you who he is, believe him. I'm a whiner and I keep whining and whining. Whining and whining and whining. That is just a great big orange whine. Which is incredible, really, for uh, a man who has probably been the luckiest person that has ever lived on face of the earth. He was given 400 and, was it $450 million by his daddy? I make $400 million a year, so what difference does it make? And he blew it all. The man couldn't even run a casino. And he still came out um, uh, smelling of roses. Incredible. He's uh, screwed over pretty much every person he's ever done business with. None of the people that were part of his uh, cabinet uh, want to have anything to do with him including his um, vice president, who he almost had killed. J.D. Vance might want to look into uh, that very strongly. A little bit of history uh, um, homework for you there, J.D. Vance. Look at what happened to the previous person in your position. I would put your affairs in order if I were you. And um, most of the people that work with him are either... Well, half of them are in jail, 
and the other half are uh, warning America that uh, nobody is safe. If the uh, screaming Mimi gets into the White House again. No one is ever safe on this hostile planet. This is what they're saying. And, uh, you know, but apart from that, no. No, I did not watch Donald Trump's interview with Joe Rogan. For two reasons. Donald Trump, Joe Rogan. In that order. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. This is absolute tosh. Thanks, Nigel. You're the best. So I have news about Nigel Farage. Uh, this says, if Trump whines all the time, should we start calling him a rosé? Well, there is actually a, a thing called orange wine now. Booze. I mean, it may well be a very, very old thing, but it's only recently come to my attention. Now they have orange wine. Uh, it's uh, another item on the uh, wine list in a restaurant that you can't afford. I don't know why it's orange, or why they call it orange, or whether it is in fact the colour orange, but uh, or they just um, they're just going through the rainbow, red and yellow and green and blue. Groovy. Um, blue wine, no. But I think it's that the wine is uh, left in contact with the skin a bit. I've got no idea. What are you asking me for? This text says, Nick, I don't like the Beatles. I'm 58 years old. I've never liked them. That's just a ridiculous thing to say, whoever you are. I mean, how can you not like the Beatles? I mean, you're, you're telling me there's no song that the Beatles have ever done that you like. That's just daft. And if there's one song that you like, then there'll be another, and then another, and another after that. It's like saying I don't like music, or, like I said before, I don't like jazz. Yowza. People who don't like jazz are people who have never listened to jazz. Not all jazz is... It's not all like that. People who don't like jazz will, will like the album, and the, the, the album that people who don't like jazz like is Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Everybody, everybody on earth should like Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. And if you don't like it, then, then uh, you need to uh, book an appointment with your GP because there is something seriously wrong with you. And that's not an exaggeration. Kind of Blue, Miles Davis, is the jazz album that people who don't like jazz like. 0345 6060 973 Wanstead. Hello, Sophie. Hello, how are you? I am great, mate. Um, so, there are so many topics, but I'll try and keep it concise. Yes. Number one, I used to hate cats. I hated them. I hated the way they moved. What's that noise? I just said, that's my door. Have you noticed that there is no squeaking sound from my fire alarm? Silence. Yes, that's right. So what happened? So no you threw the fire alarm away. <laughs> I was on the verge of <laughs> hitting it with a sledgehammer, yes. but my lovely landlord not only gave me the battery, he gave me three new fire alarms in my flat. Wow. So How big is your flat? Thing. Three fire alarms? <laughs> it's quite small, but um, I suppose he's just vigilant. Um, well, either yeah. that, or or you, uh, uh, your um, behaviour concerns him, like one of the two. <laughs> you put three in a small. How many bedrooms have you got in your flat? One. One. Three. Three fire alarms in a one-bed yes. flat. Good grief! I know. <laughs> Hypervigilant. Do you like but... playing with matches? I mean, <laughs> what's going on there? No, honestly, I'm I'm not a walking um, um, risk right. to anyone okay. or my flat. But cats, cats. until my friend got um, two British short hairs, mm -hmm. and they are like teddy bears, and they're just gorgeous. Like so. like skinheads. No, no. <laughs> two British short hairs. I think there was a lot of them marching through London today. Yeah, I was going to say, it might be a Farage <laughs> <laughs> version of a cat. Yeah. Um, but it, the other has thing... Has your cat hmm? ever suggested that you should go back to where you came from? <laughs> no, no, I don't... Oh, right, OK. <laughs> have one, but, um, yes. The... What was the other thing? The, um... The saying. It's... The lady who said it's not always dark at six o'clock. Yeah. 
So I got it straight away, Nick. Well, what does it mean? You... What does it mean? I've never yeah. heard that saying before. I don't believe it's a saying. No, well, I've never heard it before, but it's metaphorical. Yeah. And what it means is if you're going through a hard time, it won't always stay hard. It, the bad times will move a, move on right. and you'll get the good times again or positive times because right. at six o'clock in the summer it's mm -hmm. not dark no well that's um yes i suppose that uh, that makes sense yeah nick what <laughs> you, you know what you should <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mean to say it like your mum would say yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> there are. There, you should definitely do the top ten of, of um, most um, popular callers. Can I name my top three? No. Please. Ranjit. Mm. The Okie Dokie Man, and yes. Richard from Hackney. Richard from Hackney. Mm. Richard from Hackney. That, does, <laughs> that doesn't ring a bell. No, he rings it. Unless I'm hearing, I'm not hearing it right. I, I think he's from Hackney. You should definitely do the most okay. popular callers right. to your I'm show. I'm certainly not going to be doing anything of the sort. But thanks for the suggestion, Sophie. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Cheers, my dear. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Phil in Wales says, uh, just when I thought I couldn't like you more, you say the visitors is the best ABBA song. I agree, and because of your recommendation, I saw a Voyage last year, and it was fantastic. That's the uh, ABBA show that they built their own um, uh, little... Well, it's not little at all. They built their own theatre out in the middle of nowhere in the, um, in the Docklands somewhere. God, it took forever to get there. It was the worst... Uh, the worst um, sat-nav journey that uh, my machine laid out for me to get to anywhere in my entire life. It, it was just... I... I, I I cannot express in words how awful the journey was to get to where I lived to um, the ABBA thing. It was um, like, go 20 yards here and then turn left. Go 20 yards and turn right. Go 20 yards and turn left. Go 20 yards and turn right. Go 20 yards and turn left. It was like zigzag, 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 zig for over an hour. It was absolutely exhausting. I needed a holiday when I got there. There should be some sort of thing that you can program into your sat-nav that gives you an easy route, you know? I don't mind taking 20 minutes longer if I can just relax. Oh. Or a route that doesn't have any um, speed humps on it. I hate speed humps. If, it, if I could get to a place on a motorway or a dual carriageway on a relatively straight line, and it take maybe 20 minutes longer than going back and forth and 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 back and forth like that, then I would take it. But it it's too stupid to actually understand that that's what you want, which is amazing to me. I mean, they've got, you can tell a computer to make a video with a polar bear standing on a suite in the middle of the Milky Galaxy, the Milky Way. And um, it'll do that for you. So how can a sat-nav not understand that I don't like speed bumps and I don't like going uh, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right for an hour rather than take a longer trip that's just a kind of a straight line, a relaxing straight line. It's amazing that they don't have that yet. Absolutely infuriating. The internet is an idiot. You can quote me on that. <sighs> Anyway, there's more. Phil in Wales uh, continues, uh, but you're wrong about the Beatles. I can't stand them. That's just a silly thing to say, Philip. And Blade Runner 2049 was awesome. No, it wasn't. It was absolutely excruciating. I mean, just really, really terrible. That They had the nerve to call it Blade Runner is, uh, well, it's an insult. It's an insult to Blade Runner. And the only good bit was when uh, Harrison Ford punched Ryan Watsit in the face. That was my favourite part. I, and I wanted to do that the entire way through, the, through that film. And almost everything else I've ever seen him in, too. I mean, I'm not uh, ordinarily a violent person, but... like to punch him in the face. like to punch him in the face. There's just something very, very annoying about him. Uh, this text says, Missed the start of the show, but has anybody thought of a name uh, Donito for the Orange Menace? As in Dorito. Donito. <laughs> 
Well, Donito Mussolini, yes, is what uh, one of the many names that I call him, but I hadn't thought of Dorito as in Donito. I don't think people would get that, but um, Donito Mussolini, people have absolutely uh, no doubt about what I'm saying. Have we dealt with you, Sophie? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's still hanging on the telephone like Blondie. Rock and roll! 0345 6060973. Right, let's see what this one's like. Canuck. Hello, Mel. All right, Nick. Mel. Long time now speak. Yes. How are you, anyway? I am great, mate. Yeah. Uh, I've been talking about the Trump bill, the Trump. Uh, Camilla Harris election to my friends mm -hmm. and I was saying to the guy I was talking on the phone a second ago uh, a lot of people you'd be surprised how many people think that Lincoln was a Democrat that uh, the Republicans wanted to keep slavery and uh, I wonder if they like that in America uh, I don't know me personally if I was an American I'd vote Trump just to keep life interesting uh, but that's a bad all. I can't think much between, to be honest. But I think the Democrats will probably win. You don't think there's much difference between them? Is that what you just said? No, the Democrat Party and the uh, Republican Party, and uh, I mean the leaders, I just find, I find Trump funny, that's all. Funny. I think right. he says a lot of mad things. Yeah, it's funny right yeah. up until the point when the uh, stormtroopers knock down your door, Mel. <laughs> no, I don't think they're going to invade us. So... I think we've already been invaded. But, um, like I said, I think the Democrats will win. But you'd be surprised how many people think that Lincoln was a Republican, a, a Democrat. Well, you'd be surprised how many people think that Donald Trump won the last election, but it was snatched away by the uh, evil lefty Marxist communists. <laughs> yeah, that's well, true. I do say that it, 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 he reckoned it was rigged. Yeah. People said it wasn't rigged. He, do he doesn't reckon it was rigged. He knows it wasn't rigged, but um, he's too much of a baby to um, actually admit that he lost something. Yeah. I always thought the first woman to be president in America would have been Clinton. But he beat what? Clinton. Bill. That's, that's, <laughs> no, but he, his wife. The other one, yeah. That's what I thought. Well, she got more votes than uh, he did. Yeah, and I know she, he did. And she lost he anyway. Bigger, yeah. He got a bigger popular vote. That's, the, did. that's the America's screwed up electoral system which is uh, even worse than our screwed-up electoral system, if you can believe that. I was going to say, it'd be like ours. Yeah. All right, well, if I were you, uh, Mel, I would, uh, like me, cross America off your holiday list. All right. Oh, I don't okay. go there, Okay, all right. That's an excellent choice. Thanks a lot. 0345 6060 973. Conrad texts, in Brazil, my friends say, and anyone chatting to, they always say, we got Pele, you have the Beatles. Right, while well, the Beatles will live forever. Pele, on the other hand. <laughs> Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 a big sack of monkey nuts. You know, I should call that other podcast that I do uh, a big sack of monkey nuts. It's um, 30 minutes of concentrated amusement. It's clips from old shows. Last weekend, I trailed something that I eventually got around to saying on the air right at the very end of the Saturday night show. And I've been trailing it from about 10 o'clock on Friday. And as I'm saying that, I can't remember what it was. What was the thing that I said um, all the way through the shows uh, last, last time? I don't remember. No, I can't remember. Generally, I don't remember. It was, um, it was very, very important. And people kept uh, uh, re messaging in saying, what is that story that you keep saying you're going to tell? Oh, hand in the air, yes? I mean, it was the, do the donors, no? Oh, the donor story. <coughs> yes, that's right. People were absolutely furious with me because I didn't get around to the donor story until about uh, five to one on uh, the Saturday show, having trailed it since 10 o'clock the previous day on the Friday show. And so I thought, as a public service, I will put it on the Best Of podcast, which I did last time around. And that one came out on Monday. It's called The Nick Abbott Habit. 30 minutes of concentrated amusement, clips from old shows. Usually they're very, very old shows. Uh, but I thought, um, you know, I better put it on that because uh, a lot of people were shouting at me to tell that blooming story. I'd been trailing it so much. 
Uh, but I, I will tell you that you're not going to like it. It is, um, it, it's amusing, and it's also appalling, and I can guarantee you that you will not like it. You will be, uh, stunned. But it's one of the clips that's in the last episode of the podcast called The Nick Abbott Habit. Ask for it by name on an internet near you, The Nick Abbott Habit. Right then, let's have uh, Maidstone, Tony. Hello, Nick. Tony. Oh, yes. Now, um, I, you just had Sophie from Wadsford who uh, said that you should have like a top ten of callers. And um, before I talk about uh, Trump and uh, Farage's um, um, with Trump in the week and mm. Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, Sophie would have been in my top three. Right. I'm serious. She didn't even mention my name. I like Simon, the cab driver. I like Jan, the manic one. I like Isaac, and I like Mike from Yorkshire, the one who says Tony like Turner. Um, I have no idea who any of those any of those people are. Carry on. You, yes, you do. Right now, um, I can't believe she didn't mention me. Stacey's lovely. Anyway, I'm furious. Uh, anyway, I'm joking. Um, right now, did you see one of the rallies in the week where Farage? <laughs> Um, was on the stage and Trump was there with him. You know how Trump closes his eyes slightly when you're sucking up to him and he sticks his bottom <laughs> lip out? And I, <laughs> yes. no, no, he does yeah. do that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm good. I need you to play a game with me. You're going to be Trump. No. Well, you don't need to say anything, mm. but um, this was Trump. Uh, not, uh, this was Farage on stage and he went, Donald J... Sorry, let's start again. Donald J. Trump is the most bravest man oh, I have met yeah. up, ever met in my entire life. That wasn't this and week, was it? Yeah. No, it was one of his rallies. Well, you may have was seen it? it this week, but I think that uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, go on. Yeah, but then don't... Yeah, the, mo the, bravest, then, the bravest man he's ever seen. Yeah. yeah, I know. And then everyone was cheering, and then Donald Trump was just looking. He, he, he closed his half uh, eyes, yeah. like half... Clothes, yeah, like uh, like a cat would, out. like a cat would, if you were stroking it. Yeah, but why just he what, goes into what? he goes into a sort of a like a, a semi state state of bliss, doesn't he? It's just like oh yes, more of that. That's what I'm after. Praise, lather it all over me. Yeah, it's like a silent orgasm. He has. Yeah, it like, is. Literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, but you know, and then you've got, and then I think it was, um, oh, what's it, Henry Riley a couple of weeks ago. I mm. uh, went to well, what's the name of the what's the constituent uh, um, with Nigel Farage? I can't remember the name Clacton. of the constituency. That's the one. Yeah, and um, and I think it was Nick Ferrari. Morning, so is this in LBC, and then he was going round, and then they were going, oh, what do you think of? Keir Starmer and I go no 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 I don't trust anything he does <laughs> and then I go oh Farage yeah 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 I really don't believe him trust yeah, him yeah yeah uh, he always tells the truth he tells it like it is yeah and uh, and how's it been for you uh, so far well we haven't seen him he hasn't been around I uh, haven't seen hiding a hair of him no but we still believe what? in him we still believe in you Nige Nick why do people I don't think there's any hope for us. Why are people buying it? I think hope is the word um, uh, of the, the day, uh, Tony, of uh, two reasons that people buy it. One, they will lose face if they admit that they've been had. It's the same thing with the Brexit people. They still uh, claim to believe, because it's too much loss of face, to admit that they've been had, that they were uh, dumb enough to believe all of those stupid lies mm. that everybody else was saying. No, these are stupid lies. Don't believe those people. Those oily charlatans who are trying to lead you uh, down a way that is not in your best interests. And they dismissed all of those warnings and uh, plunged both feet in to this well of lies that have been uh, perpetrated upon them. And if they admit now that they've been had, it's too much loss of face. And the second thing is hope. And th this is the sad part. It's too much loss of hope. Because people in Clacton and um, Gosport and, you know, there's, there's a lot of places that are really dirt poor and they aren't going anywhere. They've sort of been forgotten by successive governments and um, it's just like a, a waiting room for people just to die. And so I can understand why they would be, why they would feel aggrieved. I mean, perhaps they... 
they just, it's a series of bad luck. They went to a bad school. They didn't pay attention. They didn't get the qualifications they needed. They made a lot of uh, decisions uh, in their lives that didn't work out very well for them. Luck means what life mostly comes down to. So they're the, uh, they're the, the victims of bad luck. And so their hope was to believe that their life would get better if they did what these oily charlatans told them to do, which would vote for Brexit, vote for uh, Nigel Farage, uh, vote for the other uh, reform uh, people and, and all of that. So we will improve your life. All you have to do is do what we tell you. And so they invest their hope in those people, which is sad because those people have no intention of improving their lives. They have absolutely, um, and, and neither, even if they did have an intention of doing it, would they have the ability to do it? So, so that's it. They won't ever change their mind because it's too much loss of face and it's too much loss of hope. Yeah, that's what that's what that's what's escaping. So we're basically surround. I've always thought most people, not most. No, I think you know when you get on the tube, you know, no one, you know, looks at you funny. I just think the majority of people are quite stupid, and that 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 that, that might sound a bit harsh. No, it's but, true. The the masses yes, are know. asses. Yes. Oh, oh I, just, <laughs> I don't think there's any hope for us. But can I talk about Kamala? Okay then. I think she's going to win. No, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it really matters no. if she wins or not. I think that the Republicans are, have put in place the methods of cheating that are mm -hmm. so strong that um, they, they're going to take it anyway. And either way, it's going to uh, be... I, I'd be surprised if we knew, know the result before the end of the year. Mm. Has that ever happened then, the US election, before... It like, you know, it gets decided in, like, normally uh, first week of November. Mm. What, has it ever been so close where we don't know the result? I don't remember that happening. No, I don't remember that happening. But then you are asking me <laughs> about history, which is, just, yeah. which is one of the uh, many, happen, many yeah. subjects I know nothing about. But I do appreciate you uh, posing the question. Good work. Thanks a lot, Tony. 0345 6060 973. History he was talking to me about. I don't know anything about history. Uh, I don't know anything about the present either. The future, on the other hand, ask me anything you like. Val in Lewisham says, I'm not fond of jazz. Blues, yes. Beatles, top of everything ever. Revolution was, uh, was my ringtone, but it wouldn't transfer across to my new phone, says Val. Well, that's nothing, Val. I changed computer, and uh, all of... I know I've said this <laughs> over and over again, but I will never, ever, ever buy anything by a uh, technology company that begins with the letter A. Because I had uh, carefully curated all of my music on their, um, uh, their prescribed music file system thing. And that, that is actually what it's called. M-F-S-T, the music file system thing. Write that down. And when I went from one computer to another, I wondered, how on earth am I going to do this? Because I'd, I'd spent a lot of time uh, carefully putting in um, artwork. that Because a lot of the albums, you download them, and they haven't got the artwork there. So I had to go and search for the artwork and cut and paste the artwork to put it in the file. I mean, it's like, kind of like ainly retentive about it. Took ages. And everything was perfect. Down to, like, if you download a double album, for instance, then the, the, the stupid MFST would put it as two separate albums. So I fixed that, which takes, it, it's, it's like, um, like, like a, a, like a, what's that pu TV show with a puzzle? The TV show with a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> There's about a million TV shows with a puzzle. But anyway, it's like um, a, sort of a way too complicated puzzle. I spent, I spent hours, hours and hours and hours. And I took it from one computer and put it onto the next. Crystal Maze, that's it. And um, I wondered how I was going to do that. And so I, I looked at the internet and it said simply, and then every time you see or hear the word simply, you'll know that what follows is not simple. But it looked simple enough, and I did precisely what the um, company in question told me to do, and I ended up with 3,000 um, empty... No, 3,000 nameless tracks called one, 
and 3,000 nameless tracks called two, and 3,000 nameless tracks called three, none of which were in any order, all of which were just single tracks with no name. God, Furious doesn't even um, come into it. So I'm never, ever, ever buying any of their products. Not now, not ever, never. I hate them. But other than that, I wish them all the best. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that their uh, next results are through the roof. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on WhatsApp, it's the same number as the phone. 0345 6060 973. Oh, by the way, I have detailed files about Nigel Farage. I also want to talk about smoking and slavery and poppies and banter and Manchester United and Manchester City. And Boris Johnson. Don't forget to remind me to do all of those. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Uh, hello. I am not one of your fans. Spence in County Antrim says, if Star Trek fans are called Trekkers, Taylor Swift fans are called Swifties, Pink Floyd fla- fa- fa- fans Floydians, what are your fans called? Well, it's probably what uh, Carol McGiffin calls me. Oh, right, yeah. On the uh, Super Soar Away podcast that we do. Which is a problem-solving podcast, by the way. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol. Oh, right, yeah. And if you have a dilemma or a problem or an issue or something that concerns you, something you've been wondering about but you wonder, why is that? Well, uh, let the professionals bend our brain to it. If you have an emotional problem that's not too serious then uh, let us know what it is, and we'll give you some... Occasionally, we come up with some pretty good advice. It's uh, a, an email only, nickandcarol at global.com. That's how to get in touch. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And prepare to be totally satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? I think you'll love it. Let's see now. Um, Hounslow. Hello, Brian. Hello, uh, Nick. Brian. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about um, um, cars. Now, you um, uh, uh, you would know because uh, you're a driver. Right? Um, the, um, the people who are, who are parking, you know, the, uh, uh, sometimes they park right up to the junction, uh, two stories. Uh, they park right up to the junction of uh, of the cars, and they can't always see this. Uh, um, uh, you know, like a motorbike uh, that's coming up um, uh, to the junction, uh, and so uh, often cars pull out too fast, and the motorbike is going so fast because you see, when the motorbike is he, going, he drives. He rides at um, a third of the width of the car, so you can't always see him. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh. <laughs> so what is your complaint? That people park too near the junction of the road, which makes it difficult to see oncoming traffic when you are trying to exit the side road? That's it, yes. Bingo. You see? Uh, 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 and uh, um, it's the same goes for uh, for, for people uh, like uh, down my road. You, you've got the uh, um, um, uh, a lot of the, the driveways. Are, uh, you know, like you can drive your car in, uh, but uh, a lot of people who, who park their cars don't. Um, uh, you know, they just drive it in forwards. Yeah. When, when, uh, because uh, you should uh, reverse in so Why you can that? take it out for, forwards. Right, but what's the see? difference? What difference does it make? Well, when you're uh, when you're driving your car, mm-hmm. you're driving um, uh, uh, a third of the length of the car. But when you're reversing, you are now driving uh, two thirds of the length of the car. So you can't always see uh, w- w- when you're reversing, especially when you w- you're backing up. Um, uh, you know, c- coming out of, out, out of the house when you're, you're, you're when you're driving forwards, you're driving one third of the length of a car. When you're driving yes. backwards, you're driving two-thirds of the length of a car. That's right. 
but that doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? Because, you see, you, you, you're now looking backwards, but you're still in the driver's seat. How about uh, if I reverse which, without looking backwards? Without... <laughs> then you, there was possibility. You might bump into something. Oh, like who cares? R running down the road. That's OK. Next door neighbor's cat. Right, you well, see, that, it, that won't damage my car that much. <laughs> no, but it might do some damage to some of your neighbours. Uh, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? That well, what if, I, people, what if I don't like my neighbours? I don't like my neighbours either, but... Huh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Brian, I'll come and reverse down your road. How does that sound? That's OK. I might me. get lucky. <laughs> I don't mind that. That's OK by me right. if you want to do that. Uh, and uh, um, uh, people would, would applaud you for doing it. Yeah. But, uh, but do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? No, I have absolutely no idea what you're trying to say. You're trying to say, um, uh, look sharp, uh, bikes are about, or something to that order. No, just Think show bike. consideration for yeah. other people. Oh, That's well, then you're saying. fresh out of luck there, Brian. Show consideration for other people? <laughs> 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 what kind of woke nonsense is that? Well, uh, this is what I'm saying. It, 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 would, uh, it would help things to go uh, better if... Uh, a little bit more you, smoothly, if, yeah. If only people just yes. uh, stopped being such giant asses. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I mean... Uh, well, don't hold your uh, breath, Brian, because uh, it hasn't happened so far. Through millions of years of, uh, d of uh, development on this planet, n we haven't noticed anybody uh, being uh, uh, acting in a considerate way so far. Well, they should. They should. <laughs> yeah, should. they should. They should, yeah. But they won't, but they should, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, fingers crossed, and uh, all um, uh, the best wishes for the future. Thanks a lot, Brian. And remember, it's manoeuvre, signal, mirror. Remember that. This text says, let's have a Nick Abbott U.S. election projection. My projection for the U.S. election is that Kamala Harris will win the popular vote, but might not necessarily win the actual election, and that um, Donald Trump's people are already in the business of trying to steal it away from under her, um, uh, under the, um, from out, out from under her, or words to that, <laughs> words to that effect, <laughs> out from under her. I feel like I reversed through that sentence. Um, so this text says, if people think a party could rig and steal an election when they're out of power, then what do they think the point is of standing against that party while they actually do have power? They might as well just take the day off while there is truth in that. But it doesn't really matter whether the Republican Party have power, whether they occupy the White House or not, because they occupy the courts. That's their trick. They've spent, um, and it's Mitch McConnell, uh, really, and his um, evil acolytes. They've spent the last eight years, pretty much, uh, trying to insert their people in all the boring jobs that nobody really considered before, like uh, election um, officials, uh, the people who oversee the counting of the election, you know, all those boring jobs that nobody had ever uh, really thought about before, or um, local courts, which not ordinarily do traffic violations, uh, that kind of thing. Really boring, boring stuff that uh, nobody had really wanted before. But uh, he had a plan to fill the local courts and then to fill the state courts and then to fill the Supreme Courts. And once you've done that and you've got the local sheriffs and uh, you've got the local police department and you've got the local mayor and you've got the, all, all of those boring um, like going nowhere uh, jobs that people didn't really care about. When, once you've filled them with all your uh, suck up yes people, then it doesn't matter whether you've got the White House or not because um, you can pretty much do anything you like. Hell, the Supreme Court just made Donald Trump king. He's not even a president, and they made him king. In fact, they've given him more power than our king would have in this country. Our king, King Charles, cannot kill someone he doesn't like and get away with it. Could he? I mean, not in public, anyway. I mean, maybe if they went up and uh, were, uh, you know, on a grouse shoot, <laughs> something like that, and he accidentally let one off in the wrong direction. Like, you know, if, uh, if Meghan had come for the weekend... <laughs> <laughs> then uh, it, in that circumstance he'd probably get away with it because all, all of his uh, flunkies would be uh, fluttering uh, around him telling us uh, that it was all a big mistake whoopsie doodle but the Supreme Court have made Donald Trump king he can literally do that thing that he always said that he could S kill someone, shoot someone on Fifth Avenue 
in broad daylight and get away with it. I mean, his thing was he wouldn't lose any votes, which is true because the people who like him have joined a cult. They think he has been sent to Earth by God. Oh. So there's no talking to them. He, Donald Trump, for them, can do anything and they won't mind. He could come over and eat their dog and they'd be perfectly okay with that. They, they blame Hillary Clinton's emails. But the Supreme Court have actually said that. Donald Trump, you can now do anything you like and get away with it. There is nothing that you can do that we would have a problem with. You have total immunity from the law. You can have, a, if you become the president again, you can have your uh, rivals killed. You can essentially be uh, America's Vladimir Putin, which, oh, God, I mean, talk about stroking him till he purrs. He would love to hear that. He'd probably have uh, an accident right there on the stage. <sighs> Just thinking about it. So that's how uh, you uh, can steal an election when you're out of power, by filling all the courts with your suck-up yes people. And then when uh, all of the court cases go before those uh, individuals that have been put there personally by the Republican Party, then they'll say, uh, uh, rigged? What do you mean rigged? No, Donald Trump won it in a landslide. Can, can you see the actual um, election papers? No, that's a secret. Uh, we lost them. The dog ate them, and then uh, some um, uh, rapist murderers from uh, Mexico ate the dog. Yeah, it's a big accident. Sorry about that. <sighs> Sally says, Nick, it's true cats can be problematic for Instagram, but in my cat's case, it's nothing to do with shadows, tones, or whatever. It's him getting his big, fat face in the way. His idea of a selfie, i.e. a selfie with me, is just an image of a big, fluffy blob with a pink nose. And before you say it, that's not me, says Sally. Well, you say that, Sally, but there is no evidence that it's not you. I mean, every picture I've seen of you is just a big, a big fat blob with a pink nose. I'm just saying. Everybody says that, Sally. If that's any help. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. You're joking. Reform leader Nigel Farage is jetting to the United States again. What? Yeah, again. In a couple of weeks, he's going to share a podium with a Trump aide who is currently in jail in order to represent Clacton on the world stage. <laughs> 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 Farage is heading to New York Young Republican Club Gala Dinner on Wall Street on December the 15th. Tickets are priced at between $500 and $30,000. The Young Republican Club. I mean, that sounds about as appealing as the Young Conservative Club. I'm, I mean, would absolutely none of the men uh, going there would be bringing a date unless they paid her to go with them. I mean, I don't know that that's true. I'm just asking questions. Would they be paying for a date to go with them to the Young Republican Club or the New York Young Republican Club Gala Dinner or the Young Conservative Club? I'm just asking questions, just asking questions, but I think it's very interesting that Nigel Farage hasn't said one way or the other. Another main speaker is Steve Bannon, former Trump strategist, jailed for failing to cooperate with an investigation into the January the 6th, the Capitol attacks. A day of love and peace. Oh. <laughs> as, Do as Donald Trump is trying to rewrite history by describing it. A day of love and peace. Yeah, only five people died. It's great. Steve Bannon is due to be released from jail next week after serving a 120-day sentence for contempt of Congress. Are there any people who used to work for Donald Trump who either did not go to jail or who are not now telling the world that Trump is a fascist wannabe dictator? No. No, I think it's pretty much all of them. And look up a picture of Steve Bannon, by the way, if you don't know what he looks like. He makes Boris Johnson look like a model in a yoghurt advert. I mean, there's people in mortuaries that look healthier than he does. Why do the people who think they're part of the master race always look like they've been assembled from discarded body parts from a science experiment? 
And in order to execute his responsibilities to the good people of Clacton, who saw fit to elect him to represent them, Nigel Farage will be off for his fourth trip to the US since he was elected MP in July. Fourth. Are you beginning to feel like you've been had yet? Or are you going to have to take some more time? Um, You're going to take some more time. Barely a fortnight after the election, a party donor paid for Farage and a staffer to fly to Milwaukee in the aftermath of um, some gun nut shot Donald Trump or at him. And his explanation for the £32,836 freebie trip was to support a friend who was almost killed and to represent Clacton on the world stage. That, and that um, uh, excuse was widely ridiculed, particularly as Daddy Trump didn't even meet him. Nigel went all that way only to be left cruelly outside by Daddy. And he still went back. How desperate is that? And fact fans, this is the same Nigel Farage who has just complained about Labour volunteers, not MPs, volunteers, going to assist the Kamala Harris campaign, saying it's going to damage Britain's relationship with Trump if he wins. Which is kind of admitting that Donald Trump is a whining baby who lives to exact infantile revenge on anyone who is nasty or mean to him. <laughs> And Farage went on to earn 25 grand speaking at the Keep Arizona Free Summit in August, where he was representing Clacton on the world stage. And then Farage left the country twice in September for a benefit event for the Heartland Institute, a right-wing think tank accused of denying human-created climate change. And Clacton is by the sea, of course, so won't be affected by climate change at all assuming that it's a hoax dreamed up by China to stop, stop Donald Trump using so much hairspray. You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. He also flew to Malaysia to speak to, uh, to the Nomad Capitalist Conference where he was representing his constituency on the world stage because, you know, capitalism has been so good for the people of Clacton. He's declared... £22,820.39 pence in income since he was elected MP for Clacton in July. £22,820 in income since he was elected MP for Clacton in July on top of his £91,000 MP salary for which he is working tirelessly night and day. Hey, Clacton! <laughs> Wake up. It's later than you think. 0345-6060-973. The Wirral. Hello, Nora. Hi, Nick. Nora. It's been quite a long time since I've yeah, since I rang. Oh, yes. Been, yeah, anyway. Um, two things. Well, a few things. But one was Boris. What you say about Boris, is it that he's supporting Trump? Eh? Is it? You know, Boris is supporting Trump. He's yeah. come out as one of his supporters. Yeah, Boris, is, is uh, that... Boris has always uh, supported Trump, and there is no evidence to suggest that he has not always supported Trump. I think Donald Trump is clearly out of his mind. I mean, if anybody uh, played a clip that said that uh, Boris uh, thought that Donald Trump was clearly out of his mind, that would be very, very embarrassing to Boris Johnson. I think Donald Trump is clearly out of his mind. Yeah, because he has always been very, very clear about how he feels about Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is clearly out of his mind. Go ahead. Well, there was a list on, um, I can't remember it was now, I saw a list of all the, and it, quite a lot of them were conservative um, previous prime ministers. Hmm. Liz Truss was on there, at least. Yeah. Um, and said that he, he was supporting Trump. These yeah. are all Trump supporters. Right, I know. The, 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 uh, the Brains Trust, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I just wondered if that's true, how that fits with his relationship with Ukraine, because... If Trump gets in, Ukraine can kiss goodbye to its country. Yeah. There's going to be no more arms there. No. Um, and yet Boris is their patron saint practically at the moment, isn't he? So well, he used uh, Ukraine to uh, escape to any time that uh, questions started swirling about his behaviour. He was uh, on a plane faster than uh, than you could think. Mm. But so he's got a very complex um, relationship with them then, hasn't he? If he supports their... I mean, what's going to be an aggressor in all but name? 
um, but at the same time pretends to be their saviour. Yeah, I don't anyway. think it's complicated at all. I think uh, oh. Boris Johnson does what Boris Johnson thinks is going to be best for Boris Johnson. It's as simple as that. Mm. Right. Anyway, that was one point. And then the other thing, I'm going to ask you, I don't know whether I'm going to put you on the spot here, I hope not. Um, but if a few weeks ago, I think it was one of your Sunday night shows, um, you did some research, you um, quoted some research and did quite an excellent um, piece about it on how the billionaires have become more, there's even more billionaires than there are, than I ever, ever have been. And this, the average working person now has to work, I think it was 40 something hours to achieve the same standard of living that they've got for 30 odd hours a few years ago. You can't remember what that research, where that research came from, can you? <laughs> no. That's a stupid question, yeah, isn't it? No, yeah. no I can't, no. Um, look it up on the World Wide Wait there, uh, Nora. Just uh, well, dial it into Google. Up? Huh? But what do I look up? That's what I've tried to. And I've um, what, what, what look, wage look stagnation since uh, 1970. Oh. Try that. Wage stagnation. Okay, I'll do that. And, and then, then the other thing... And do another search on uh, how many uh, billionaires have been created in the last 10 years. Okay. Right. Thank you. I think, I, there was a, it was the people behind it. was a, a, a you know, it was... Um, a recognised body, and I can't yeah. remember who it was. Right. Oh, well, anyway. The internet so, but, knows. Um, the internet knows. Okay. All right. One more thing. Mm -hmm. Your bathroom. I think it would be more appropriate to call it pistachio than avocado, <laughs> because you don't go in the bathroom for an av. You don't go in the bathroom for a what? For an av. An who av. goes to the bathroom for an av? But pistachio. Oh, 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 I get it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nora. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. You do not go to, uh, to the bathroom for an adv. That's just a fact. Boris Johnson, you say? Well, bad news, Bodge. Sales of Boris Johnson's political memoir are understood to have slumped well below expectations, with the much advertised release now on track to be overtaken by a cookbook. Isn't that absolutely awful? <laughs> Despite an apparent £2 million advance on the 784-page account of his time in Downing Street, the book called Unleashed only managed to sell 42,528 copies in its opening week, far fewer than his publishers Harper Collins had likely predicted. The Blob suffered a 62% reduction in his sales lead this week, narrowly managing to cling on to the number one spot, selling just 133 more copies than S Tim Spector's The Food for Life cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Margaret Th Thatcher? No! Yeah, that's her. Well, she sold 120,000 copies upon the release of her 1993 memoir, and Tony Blair sold 92,000 copies in the first week of his book. Less than half of Tony Blair's sales, Bodge. It's almost as though people aren't interested in, in him uh, anymore. Perhaps that's because the more people know about him, the less they actually like him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... The more they know, the more they think he's a... The great big greedy nincompoop. It's like his yesterday's news, stale bread, an egg that's gone off, which is exactly what he looks like he smells of in those just woke up with a hangover after sleeping in a hedge promotional videos that he records to advertise his columns in the mail, which I bet almost no one has paid to read either. And remember that newspaper villain Prince Harry? He sold 450,000 books in his first week, and Mr. Blobby sold 42,000, less than a tenth the number that Hazard out of Hazard and Sparkles shifted. And the right-wing press have done nothing but shower Blobby with praise. Mr. Blobby saves the world. He's the man with a plan. Vote Blobby, they said. As opposed to Harry, who to the press is a traitor and a dimbo hoodwinked into abandoning his country by the wicked witch of the West. And, by the way, the publishers HarperCollins that paid the Blob a £2 million advance for a book is part of the same company that owns the Times and the Sun. It's Rupert Murdoch's publishers. So you'd think that the promotion that they gave it would guarantee its success. But Blobby seems to be so disliked that even the entire edifice of the right-wing press can't prop him up. Mind you, the way he looks these days, he'd need scaffolding to prop him up. Maybe you should have a glass of water every once in a while, Blobby, in between your other refreshments. Booze. Just think about it. 
Good news, though. Uh, Blobby still managed to outsell his successor, Liz Truss, whose book about her 49-day stint as uh, Prime Minister sold 2,228 copies in the UK in its first week. I wonder why. I'm genuinely unclear. She's unclear. She just doesn't know. <laughs> And it couldn't happen to some nicer people. Paul in Wincanton says, Nick, I can't listen tonight. I'm out with the missus. Anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing your biannual rant about the clocks changing. Let's start a movement. Keep up the good work, says Paul. I don't think I've got it in me. It's just so, it's just so depressing. Why do we have to do this? So some um, cow fondlers can um, see what they're doing. In the north of Scotland. Farmers, not fondlers. <laughs> Leslie Eltham says, When the Don is back in the White House, do you think he will put you on the so-called hit list after all the lies and disinformation that you have told about him? Disinformation? Liar! Yeah. The lying press. There's another phrase he got from Hitler. <laughs> this is a warning. Warning, warning. Is anybody listening? No. No, apparently not. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Listen to him. He knows everything. Cold text. Nick, I just enjoyed an evening listening to America. Not the country, the band. He says, UK hippies singing about highways, muskrat love and horses with no names. Can we give it a name? What, the horse? Uh, soap. <laughs> How about soap? <laughs> um, and I don't think that they were UK hippies. I think they're partly American. I think mostly American. As you would, um, uh, as you would be led to believe by the name of the band, America. America. Colin in Bracknell says, please spare a thought for the people of Tromso in Norway. The sun sets on November the 10th and doesn't reappear until February the 13th. Wow. And they're still the happiest people in the world. Why is that? Is it because of all that hot hygge? Disgusting. That they, uh, you know, hot hygge, that they're all over each other. What happens in Tromso stays in Tromso, eh? Uh, because it's so snowed in, nobody can get anywhere near it. David in North Carolina texts, The MAGA pickup truck convoy will be coming to my town next week. Oh, God, really? <laughs> Same thing happened four years ago. The drivers all look like members of ZZ Top. I uh, love the original Deliverance movie, and uh, they drive the macho-sounding trucks like the Chevy Silverado, the Ford Bronco, and my favourite, the Dodge Ram. I've got to get out of here, says David in North Carolina. Well, you could uh, cover your yard in um, uh, swastikas and you'll fit right in. People have started driving those stupidly huge trucks in this country. What are they thinking? I see a lot of those now. I mean, 4 by 4s are bad enough. They're the, uh, the size of uh, tanks. And you'll see one tiny woman who'll be going back and forth to the supermarket in um, a, a car that's as big as a bus. Why? Why? Absolutely ridiculous. But now, in this tiny country with its uh, thin, windy streets, you've got people driving MAGA pickup trucks. I see them everywhere now. What for? And all they've got in the back of the truck, which is open to the elements... Of course, because it's, uh, you know, it's for Americans who will go and, uh, you know, go uh, hunting and put a deer in the back of their truck or supplies for their uh, mountain retreat or whatever it might be. Generators and all, all sorts of things go in the back there. But in this country, what are you going to put in the back of a pickup truck, for crying out loud? Your Waitrose bags? <laughs> Somebody will nick them as soon as you, as soon as you go to a, a, a crawl in, in front of the lights. Absolutely ridiculous. And there's a, there's no way you're going to find a parking space big enough for them. Like, ever. You'll never be able to stop your car. I think that people have... Um, and, of course, it's all men who are driving these things. And I think that they have, uh, you know, a certain issue. A certain... Um, uh, a, a certain little something that they're trying to make up for. 
It doesn't matter how big your car is, it don't make up for that. Sam in Cambridge says, Nick, you always talk about Trump's supporter dinglings, but more worrying are the amount of top surgeons, wealthy stockbrokers, judges, barristers, and high-level executives, people who, are not, people who are supposed to be highly intelligent. I just cannot believe it, says Sam in Cambridge. I don't believe that top surgeons, ju uh, d judges, well, not top judges anyway. Barristers, yeah, I don't know. High-level executives, I'm not sure. It's a combination of... I mean, you don't have to be that smart to be a judge. I mean, <laughs> just look at them. Um, I think uh, you, you do have to be smart to be a surgeon. I very much doubt that top surgeons are going to be voting for Donald Trump. I just don't believe it. Executives, uh, perhaps. Barristers, maybe. Judges, depending. And stockbrokers. Well, it, it depends on whether they think that Donald Trump will be uh, good for them. And if they've got a lot of money, then he pro they probably will benefit... And if they don't, they probably won't. They have not shelled it for you. Belfast, Brendan. Hello, sir. Yes, Brendan. Um, it was what what um, triggered me this evening was the idea that uh, the clocks go back and the absurdity of it. Uh, it's it's just absurd. It is. But it, it got me thinking that now, I'm at a certain age now. Uh, where I, I've, I've suddenly it suddenly dawned on me mm -hmm. that if uh, I'm not if you're not hit by a bus or you know aren't struck down by a sudden illness and uh, die at a very early age that before you die if you trundle along naturally till your end yeah that that uh, you, you, you disappear. Before you actually die, I become invisible. You know, I used to walk into pubs and girls would come over and talk to me and everything else. And is, is that? Tr is, I, wait a minute. Is that true? Which part? The part where you? Um, well, I, I believe that the part where you walked into pubs. Yeah, you had me there, but you lost me with girls used to come up and talk to me. Is that true? Oh yeah, yeah. And guys, and guys. But uh, um, now I am invisible. Right. You know, no, nobody sees me anymore. And then I was thinking about uh, people were ringing up, I don't like the Beatles, and the clocks go back. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, when, when was a good time? And I thought, see, in uh, 20 years, the horror that's going on at the moment in the world, yeah. people will look back to now. The good old say, days. Do you remember COVID when yeah. we were all together mm -hmm. and we all went out and we all applauded yeah. the. NHS. Do you remember and, uh, a time when we all didn't have microchips in our brains telling us what to do? <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> 2023 and 2024. Yeah, the that was when we days. were free. Yeah. Yeah, because when you look back, even looking, it's the world is always a better place in retrospect. You know, the Second World War, everybody pulled together, but there was millions being murdered. Uh, yeah. lands laid by donkeys uh, running in the machine gun nests, yeah, that's and that's great. World War One. You know? Anyway, yeah, uh, ev yeah, everything's great. So you know, I've always thought that the best time to be alive is now. Whenever you're having that conversation, exactly. the best time to be alive is now. Yeah, I mean, it, it might not be in the future. There might be, you know, a couple of big events that happen. It could be World War Three, forthcoming attractions, or it could be the total breakdown of our climate. I mean, the planet will be all right. It's just that all of the all all of this life that we have fashioned for ourselves that will be just gone. I mean, we'll just get blown away, and uh, we'll never be able to we'll recreate it. We'll be back to living in caves, except there won't be enough caves for the number of people. I mean, it could be an absolute hell on earth. But at the moment, at this moment right now, it's probably the best time to be alive. Next. That's why you've got a radio show and I'm a caller, because you've just said what I was trying to say. Right. Uh, and uh, I 100% I, I agree with that. you got to live now for the moment, because there is no past and there is no future. You don't know. So just enjoy it yeah. and try and get on with it. The you know? only thing that exists is this moment right now. Oh, there it went. Oh, that's right. Listen, see, just on uh, the clocks going back and thinking back in time, mm -hmm. 
I've rang you quite a few times. I don't know why you would remember or not, because uh, sometimes you suffer from uh, serious... Uh, I'm Me- not sure mental it, decline? It, it, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, about a few nights ago, I had nothing else to do. That's how uh, important you are to me. Yeah. And uh, Because no, you went into a pub, nobody came up to you, you being invisible and all, yeah. You, they yeah, left you yeah. with your thought. Mm-hmm. And then, uh-huh. So I put my headphones in and I stuck on, uh, what do you call it, LBC's... Uh, Schedules and uh, playback or whatever it's called, and <laughs> I played back to last Saturday. Are you talking about Global Player? That that's it. Yeah, that thing. Yes, and uh, I, I, I listened back to your show on the Saturday because I wanted to know what it was you were talking about about the donut. The donut. Yes. And yes. No, I thought it was a donut. Oh no, not a donut. Much much worse than that. But don't, but don't but if, don't uh, don't tell anybody because um, they, they won't like no. it, and they they will they can go and enjoy it in full on Global Player because I included it in the clip podcast, which is called the Nick Abbott Habit, and that's uh-huh. uh, in the uh, last one there. You can also, of course, hear it uh, because we do um, a podcast of the Friday and Saturday night shows, so it's on the end uh-huh. of the Saturday night show last weekend. Yeah, you should you should mention that sometimes now because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think you, you, you take enough opportunities. I to, don't to squeeze, no. to squeeze that in. I'm very but poor the, at self promotion. I just yeah, I, I just forget. Exactly. Well, here's what I'm saying. If you would allow me, uh, so I listened back anyway, hmm. and uh, lo and behold, I was talking to you. I come up on the playback. Huh? And, and how did how did was, you sound to you? This is what I'm going to say. It's the first time I've actually ever heard myself talking to you, mm-hmm. and it was just by pure chance and mistake. Yeah. And and what did you think? I have this, I detest with a passion <laughs> my voice. <laughs> I want I want to kill myself except I love less. Right. But. My voice is, I don't know. Grating? I think it's, it's worse than that. If, it's, if like, I met it's like me, tin- tinnitus? Something, it's, it's like having um, like a rusty nail poked in your ear. Is that what you mean? It's like a screaming cat in a biscuit tin. <laughs> I, well, if I met me, I would say, listen, you, you should be quiet or yeah. go away. Yeah, a period of and, uh, uh, silence. So let, let's start with a year, and then we'll work uh, our way up from there. How does that sound? Uh, okay. Well, listen, that's it. So right. I was shocked, horrified. Yeah. At, uh, uh, well, imagine, my, how, imagine how I feel. That's... You have my deepest sympathy. <laughs> so I don't know why you have not blacklisted me yeah. and said to your producers, listen, see if I right. gave him bell boss rings up with, with, with yeah. the load here. That, that, reminds, that reminds me, Brendan, you're banned. <laughs> <laughs> listen, enjoy your night. Here, All right, why not? you one quick question? Yes. A quick question. Have you ever visited our uh, Emerald uh, Island? What, where the... The little people. ...live? No. I knew that. I knew that. You have never been in Ireland, have no, you? No, I haven't, no. I, the, the, here's the reason why. I refuse to spend money to go to a place that's colder than where I'm leaving from. I just won't do it. Well, I'll tell you, you don't know what you're missing. Ireland, the 40 shades of green. Mm. And I, I'm not inviting you, by the way. Right. But what I'm saying is... You like gardens, you like trees, you like uh, flowers. We have... uh, You should have a look at what's available here. It's the most beautiful country in in, the world. In the world, yeah. If we had sunshine, (laughs) we would all be speaking German. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to anywhere that rains more than where I'm leaving from. I just won't do it. Well... All right. Okay. Uh, you've Let's given me some of the. Th- to you. Yeah, you give me. Some, well, it was awful he- uh, hearing from you, Brendan. I, I really mean <laughs> it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Some nobody. 0345 6060 973. 
Now, this text says, Nick, did you hear that Orange Jesus released a new perfume collection for men and women? It's called Fight, Fight, Fight. It cost $200 and has been voted as a very weak performance. Perfume performance. That doesn't make sense. I think you've got the germ of something there, but not quite it. Kath in North Wales texts, £300,000 worth of cheese has been stolen. Are these cottage pie texts a confessional uh, cry for help? <laughs> uh, you'd have to have been listening to the beginning of the show or yesterday's show to have any idea what that was about. I can barely remember myself. Here's a call in Maidstone. Hello, Rob. Hello. Rob. How are you? Great, mate. So I thought we could talk about the, um, the rainbow poppies. Oh, I've got detailed files. Well, you see, no, because I mean, I have, I've had a few military lovers in my time. And as one of them told me, if you took all the puffs out of the army, you couldn't defend the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> but I think but more, it's on a more serious note. Yes. Um, people, I think people don't understand. Back in the 80s, I had a boyfriend who was a Royal Marine who'd been at the Falklands and in Northern Ireland. And a couple of years later, it was discovered he was gay and he was kicked out with a dishonorable discharge. He lost his pensions and his medals. And another friend of mine was a paratrooper. He developed AIDS and he was dishonorably discharged. So he didn't get even get a medical discharge and died without any of the support networks that anyone would normally expect and with no money. Yep. So we really need to, I mean, I get that there are certain people who find this so offensive, but gay people have been in the military as long as we've had a military. Yeah, well, I understand that. And I just, I, don't, I just, you know, I find it, I, I cannot understand why in this day and age people find this such an insulting thing that we recognise that gay people have given their lives for this country as well as straight people. Uh, yeah, it's usually the people who haven't um, uh, done uh, any of the above who are making the most noise about um, what you just described. Yeah. So I, I thought, I tell you, I, I would try and be humorous to start, but it actually really quite upsets me. Yeah, as it should. Because I know of people who have gone to their graves in disgrace because of the laws we used to have. And now we can't even remember them as the service pit personnel that they really were and the brave men who went to serve our country. Yeah, well, we've only just forgiven Alan Turing for crying out loud. <sighs> and we haven't really forgiven him because we still had Conservative MPs who wanted to vote against him getting a pardon. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> as the more things change, the more they say they say. The yeah, same. ain't that right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, good work, um, Cheers, Rob. Cheers, thanks for that. Yeah, outrage erupted after the Royal British Legion announced a new pin that paired the red poppy with the multicoloured Progress Pride flag. Or, as it was written, Fury as colourful badge is offered for sale beside the usual red one. The flag, which includes elements uh, representing binary, intersex, trans and other marginalised communities, was selected over the more traditional rainbow flag, which would have been perfectly fine with the right-wing press, yes? No. Of course not. A spokesmodel for the organisation said that the pride flag is widely accepted as the most inclusive symbol for sexual orientation and gender identity, but as any fool know, being inclusive is woke, and being woke is bad... And we're all just so very angry, we could scream. <laughs> Veterans and campaigners have taken to social media to voice their anger over the badge. Really. Unhinged anger on social media. That is a surprise. The flag, which includes elements representing binary, intersex, trans and other marginalised communities, was selected over the more traditional rainbow flag. A spokesperson for the organisation defended the decision by saying the pride flag is widely accepted as the most inclusive symbol for sexual orientation and gender identity. And military personnel with those particular identities were thrown out of the armed forces in disgrace if they were found out to be who they were until the year 2000. All through the two world wars and all the little ones we engaged in, if you were found out, you'd not only get thrown out of the military, you'd go to jail for two years just for wanting to serve your country. So this small acknowledgement wouldn't upset people, would it? Yes. You bet it would. 
A randomly selected very angry veteran called Jeff said, This is another pointless and deeply offensive exercise in wokeism. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Another person said, Your pin linking the poppy with the pride flag is misconceived and is causing deep upset. Yeah, but only the, to those that get upset at the sight of colours. So that very important story over furious anger again. Poppy, with colourful addition to recognise those who served without being recognised, goes on sale alongside the usual poppy, and men all over the country blow their tops like they've just been forced to sit through drag time story hour dressed in stockings and suspenders. It doesn't affect you. The usual poppy is still available. Stop getting triggered so easily. It'll be better for your heart and you'll probably live longer. Vic in Barking says, apparently Keir Starmer had a second croissant for breakfast this morning. When will he stop sponging off the people? Did he pay for the croissant or did he get it as a freebie? If it was a freebie, then what was he promised by his union paymasters? It's, <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a whole four months in and instead of fixing the lad 14, the last maybe, 14 years of Tory incompetence, he's eaten croissant, French croissant. And this is the first sign of him capitulating to the EU. The sooner we leave the ECHR, the sooner the toolmaker's offspring will be stopped from eating foreign muck. That's a good point, Vic. You want to write that down. You write that down, they'll give you a column in the right-wing press. I'm telling you. Big money. Huge. And Graham says, the orange man-baby will tell us the truth about the aliens. That's got to be worth it. If he knew about the aliens, he'd have told us already. Are you kidding? E.T., he came to me, he said, Sir, you're doing a fantastic job. It's out of this world. I said, thank you. Colin says, Trump and Uncle Nigel have accused Labour of political interference in US politics. Do you think that Nigel Farage might consider politically intervening <laughs> in Clacton someday? <laughs> in Clacton someday? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I think it's a big fat no. It's a big fat no from him. How's Brexit going, by the way, Nigel? Brexit's going great. Glad to hear it. What's your favourite thing about it so far? There came an echoing silence. This says, uh, Nick, I think most people don't understand the gravity of the upcoming US election. If Trump gets in again, that could be the last fair election the US have. I think the US has already had the last fair election. I don't think this one, there's going to be anything fair about this one. They have all the people in place to make it as unfair as they want it to be. I mean, what's fair about winning the the vote and then still losing which is what happened to Hillary Clinton it's what happened to Gal Gore as well they keep winning but they keep losing the Democrats and that's because it's a rigged system and you look at the map of America and it looks as though almost all of it is red as in the um, uh, the Republicans because it's all the middle part. It's all red. And no one lives there. It's completely empty. If you ever driven through America from coast to coast, you'll know that after a couple of hours, there's nothing there. You'll leave New York or uh, wherever it might be on one coast, and then you can, you can drive for um, all day, all day, and you won't see another person. You won't see a town or a, you certainly won't see a city, and the scenery doesn't change. On and on and on you go, and there's no one there. Hell, Carolina has got two states, north and south. What's that about? There's about six people and three cows live there. And then uh, there's absolutely nothing at all until you get to the, uh, the other side. And, and the blue is on the edge, you know, where the smart people live. All the people who couldn't get it together to leave the hokey-doke podunk towns that they were born into. They're all in the middle, and they're all, uh, all for Donald Trump. It's the reds in the middle, and the blues, the smart people on the outside. And the blues uh, vote uh, Democrat, and uh, all of the... All of those people, the ones with green teeth and mullets, they're voting for uh, Donald Trump. We just want President Trump, those people. 
I hope none of this is offensive. <laughs> or, or will in any way sour Britain's relations with America should the screaming Mimi become the president again? I can be more presidential than anybody. Yeah, sure you can, Donnie. Sure you can. Nobody has ever seen anybody be more presidential than him. 0345 You can text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on WhatsApp, it's the same number as the phone. 0345 Claire in Utoxeter texts, My cat would be black if she had fur, but she's a sphinx, so only has dark grey skin where the black fur should be. Does that mean I can be in the Black Cat Owners Club? Yeah, those things are weird. I mean, they look like they would break if you stroke them too hard. They just look... I don't know, why would you pick a cat with, cat with, with no fur? You've got a naked cat there, Carrie. Cover it up, no one wants to see that. 0345 6060 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Yeah! Dude! What the hell is going on? The uh, wheel is going to turn backwards because... Uh, I suppose that makes sense. There's nobody going to be able to see it do it. I mean, is it going to? Is the big wheel going to turn backwards at the point that the clocks go back? Because if so, there won't be anybody there to see it. And if there's nobody there to see it, will it actually happen? Will it? Will it exist? You know, like trees falling in a forest. That stupid thing. Of course, they make a noise. <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Uh, yeah. What happens with um, Big Ben, though? It just, is there somebody in there that actually moves the hand backwards? And can you do that without ruining the clock mechanism? Because you're not supposed to do that with a watch, are you? You're not supposed to move it backwards because um, unless this is one of those things that you were told as a kid and ne never actually true. If you move it backwards, I heard that you break the, uh, the mechanism of your watch. Although, having done that, it... Um, it hasn't so far. But then I think maybe if I just do it one more turn, it might break. But if you move it forwards and you've got one of those little date things on your watch, then you've got to go, oh, blimey. You've got to go all the way through the, uh, the blooming month. Damn it! <sighs> Plus the clocks are going back. Oh, no. Oh, God. You know, we're going to wake up tomorrow and uh, everything will seem uh, fine. Everything will seem okay. And then it will get to uh, five o'clock, and then it will be dark. Five o'clock. I can't stand it. Why? Just to uh, appease some cow fondlers. Farmers. <laughs> Not fondlers. <laughs> Andy says, why does everybody keep saying that Donald Trump is dangerous and a threat to democracy? Biden has been asleep. Sleepy Joe. He's done nothing for world peace for, for four years. Putin has invaded another country. China are in ATIing Taiwan. Israel are out of control in the Middle East. Muslim and Spanish votes are going to Trump, and people were better off under his presidency. Both sides are putting out fake facts during this campaign. Just saying, <laughs> says Andy. Andy, would you would you like to buy a full stop? No, no, I didn't think you did. No, he doesn't do full stops. He just speaks in huge sentences. Shall I read that again? <laughs> no, I ain't going to read that again. No, didn't make sense the first time, probably won't the second time either. This says, Parliament's clock mechanics will disengage the electric motor driving the hands, set the hands to a new time, and then re-engage the motor, ensuring that the hands are rotating to the correct time again. Well, even if that's not true, it does sound plausible. P Parliament's clock mechanics 
will disengage the electric motor driving the hands. Now, do they do that at the... Because they must be on, uh, what, double, triple time. And they'll get an extra hour. Blimey, they'll be coining it in, won't they? I'm going to uh, drive by there uh, a little later on and um, shout at them, give them grief. What time is it? What time is it? Here, yeah, mate, do you know what the time is? Like that. Regent's Park. Hello, Vance. Hello, Nick. It's lovely to hear your programme. It cheers me up very much. I, I, Thanks, I, Vance. I, I, OK. I've only got a few react comments to make, not anything terribly original. OK. But one of your earlier callers this evening asked whether there had ever been a closer um, US election campaign than mm. the present one. Right. Um, there has been, when Al Gore was running against uh, J.W. Bush, yeah. Um, yeah. Bush won by only 537 votes. Absolutely. 537 votes. This is another one of those times where uh, the Democrat got more votes and lost anyway. That's right. Yeah, exactly. It had to go to a court case, but it was really razor thin, that yeah. was. That was the, what, the hanging chads, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly so, yeah. Which, which, it's, which sounds like a, a racist crime, but it isn't. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or an exotic fruit or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. And then a couple of weeks ago, you were talk You mentioned a Triumph Stag, and you said it was a beautiful car. Oh, the Triumph Stag. Oh. <laughs> what a great-looking car. I've had mine <gasps> since 1979. Have you? So I've had it for 45 years. Wow. Yeah. That must and be worth quite a large amount of money. Yeah. Um, I'm giving up driving now, so my son in New Zealand is going to have it shipped out there so that he can drive it. He learned to drive in it, so I want What's to its reliability it like? Because those old Triumphs were terrible. Uh, fantastic. Really? I, I've always had a good mechanic who serviced it properly, hmm. and it never let me down. A yeah. Triumph Stag. Now, kids who um, weren't around in the 1970s, you're going to have to go ahead and look that up, but it is one of the best-looking British cars ever made, am I right? Yeah, it was designed by Pinin Farina. Really? Yeah, and I've, I'm driving now, for my own benefit, uh, a little um, Ford street car, um, coupe, and that was also designed by Pinin Farina, and that's a lovely little car. A Ford street car? What's that? Coupe. Yeah, it's a two a two seater, very strictly a two seater, mm. and uh, I think only two thousand five hundred were ever made in the uh, in the Pinin Farina uh, design studio. It was launched by who's that small? Pop star in from Australia. What's her name? Kylie uh, Minogue. Yeah, that's right. She's, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, she is quite tiny. Yeah, yeah, she is quite tiny, and my car is tiny. But the stag is going to New Zealand. That's now, is it called. a stag? Has it got a hard top, or does it have um, a rag top? Both. Both. It's both. both. Yeah. Okay, so you've got yeah. the T bar. Yep, that's right. right. Yeah. And uh, the the youngling who is my glamorous assistant next door has just popped a photograph of an old Triumph stag uh, on my screen and says, is this it? If so, it looks bang average. Bang God. average? The kids oh, today, no what way. a disappointment they are, eh? No way. Uh, I remember, by the way, one camping trip we did, towing a caravan, and my son, he was about 16 years old, he was sitting on the back seat, and we had the roof off, so, you know, we had just the T-bar, and he was standing up as we were driving along, holding on to the T-bar, and he said, Papa, do you know, at this altitude, I have less oxygen than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well done, Justin. Yeah, that's, it, <laughs> you, you're getting knowledge. <laughs> well, yes, that, that is uh, actually accurate, probably. Ish, yeah, almost. Yeah, All right, yeah. good to talk to you, Vance. I'll tell you what, you need to get a new phone because I don't know what is uh, wrong with the one that you're using, but it's absolutely abysmal sound that you've got on that. Terrible. Throw it away and start again. 0345 Um This text says, I have to confess, though, I am pro-Trump. Sorry about that. Below, I am sharing Forbes' list of celebrities report, uh, supporting Harrison Trump. Mel Gibson for Trump. <laughs> 
it's quite a long list, as you will see. Well, I, I don't have the list in front of me because it hasn't been cut and pasted for my uh, pleasure. But I think uh, we can stop at Mel Gibson for Trump. <laughs> I don't think we need to read any further. Mel Gibson. It, Donald Trump has got Mel Gibson, Ted Nugent, and Kanye West. Whoop dee dee scoop poop. I don't think we really need to know any further, do we? I mean, if if we didn't know anybody that was supporting Kamala Harris, I think uh, an undecided would have already made up their mind. Mel Gibson, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> he does seem to collect the world's worst people. I think he's got John Voight as well. God. Uh, cranks and um, the just uh, weirdos, all of them. I mean, look at look at the rallies that he has, Donald Trump. Every single person that shows up to those rallies looks like there's something wrong with them. No offense. This text says, "Stop turning cottage pie into a lasagna. Instead, add a bit of a big spoon, rather, of mint sauce into the meat and leave the mash alone. Game changer." Well, that sounds pretty good too. A big spoon of mint sauce into the meat, um, and then. Don't put any cheese in the mash. Well, you could you could do both. You could put cheese into the mash. I'm not sure about the uh, mozzarella on top, but uh, definitely parmesan on top of that. Uh, do uh, like a little one of those, and then a little one with the uh, mint sauce into the meat, and leave the mash with uh, no cheese in it. And then, uh, you know, do a taste test. Mmm. Mmm. That sounds excellent. I could do with a couple of those right now, as a matter of fact. Giles says, I've listened to the Beatles and the jazz music, and I hate them both. <laughs> but I love Coldplay's new Moon Dance album. Oh, OK. Well, if you'd led with that, Giles, then I wouldn't have bothered to read the rest of it. You don't like the Beatles, but you do like Coldplay. Uh, uh, yeah, OK. You've, uh, you've delighted us enough. Away with you. Um, this text says, I love the Beatles, I also like cats. That settles it. There, you see? Settled. And uh, this one says, Celebrities seem to prefer Harris, but many Americans approve of Trump draining the Washington sw swamp. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're joking. He didn't drain the swamp, he filled it. Donald Trump drained the swamp. If he didn't drain the swamp in his first four years and filled it with some of the world's worst people, then he certainly ain't going to do it if, he, if he's given another go at it. Is he? Drain the swamp. Some people... I don't think... There's some people that shouldn't be allowed to access the internet without adult supervision. I think that we can agree on that, can't we? Jerry says, To add to all your cat storytellers tonight, I, I had an old cat too, then it died. I've now got a dog. If anything changes with the dog, <laughs> with the dog, I'll message you again. Well, I'm hoping not to hear from you uh, for a good long while, Jerry. Thanks for the update, mate. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Now, uh, you have to remind me that I've already done the Boris Johnson thing, so that's good. I've got that out of the way. I did the Poppy thing, so that's good as well. But I also want to do the uh, Manchester United Manchester City thing, the uh, banter bouncers. Um, smoking and uh, youth movement. I want to at least try and get through that. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. What number are you calling from? 0345 6060 973. Uh, this text says, Well, I couldn't afford the ABBA puppetry voyage, but I watched ABBA phonics at the Royal Albert Hall. Those singers with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra were so cool. Try it, Nick. What's ABBA phonics? What is that? What's the phonics part? I mean, we used to have um, a phonics lab at school where you put headphones on and listen to uh, somebody say, La plume de ma tante, and then you had to repeat it into a recorder. God, it seems like I'm actually making that up. My, my memory is... Um, it's just going into overdrive, and um, I'm just fantasizing about that. But that actually happened. We used to sit in booths with a recorder, and somebody would say, um, Où est la plume de ma tante? And then I'd have to repeat it into um, uh, the microphone while a recorder was going. 
and at the front, the uh, invigilator could listen to each individual person in their booth just to make sure they weren't, uh, you know, mucking about. That seems like another life. Uh, it seems like it happened to somebody else, but I think it happened to me. Uh, this said, um, well, I couldn't afford the ABBA... No, I, I, I read that already. It's not, it, it, but Voyage isn't puppetry, but I don't quite know what it was. It's this remarkable thing um, that's... Um, the, the, everything about it is remarkable, actually. The ABBA built this sort of mini stadium in the middle of nowhere, and um, they, they must have spent millions on it and expected people to come and um, cover the costs. And they did. And they still do. And you, you, you can't get tickets. It's just, um, it's like sold out all the time. And I spent the entire time watching it thinking, what is it that I'm actually watching? I could not figure it out. It's just the most remarkable thing because it really did look like they were there. And I know they weren't, but it looked like they were. And they started with my favourite uh, track, and it was it was, which is a little bit annoying because you know the lights went down and the people went uh, mad, and then they seemed to walk onto the stage, and there they were, right there. And uh, my brain was it was as though it was being put through the mangle. I couldn't figure out what it was I was looking at, and the first song was the Visitors, which is my favourite ABBA song. And it came and went, and I wasn't really paying attention to the song because I was too busy thinking, what is that? It looks like they're there. Couldn't figure it out. Even at the end, I had no idea. But it's a marvellous thing. It really is. It's, uh, it's well worth it. It's, it's not cheap at all, but, uh, you know, treat yourself. You're worth it. 0345 Cumberland Old Andrew. Good evening, Nick. Yes. Just to say that your memory of sitting in a booth learning languages yeah. was absolutely correct. It was something that was produced by Longman. Longman? Yes, it was a, 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 long, a Longman a language lab, and we had them at our school as the well. The language lab, that's right. Yeah, that's what they called it. Not phonics, yeah. it was the language lab. Longman audiovisual French, and you went through various stages of nouns, verbs, etc. Yeah. And our, our uh, lang modern languages classroom had the booths along each side and the, 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 the languages teacher had this sort of console that they would sit at and would go around, each pupil would sit there and work through the, yeah. the languages course and the, the, the teacher could, sit, could sit listen in to what uh, each That's right, was doing. and you never knew when you were being listened to. Correct. Yes. And they could, the teacher, you had to actually sit there and do it. <laughs> the teacher could be listening and they could say, sorry Oi. Nick, you got that one wrong. Yeah, that that's actually. right, see me after class. Yes, correct. Exactly. And just to say the triumph stag. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm sure I saw something on the television that said that the engine in the stag was notoriously bad. It was the weakest part of the Triumph stag. Yeah, my uh, uh, recollection of um, Triumphs of all stripe is that they never started. Yeah, and supposedly the, the engine, because British Leyland was badly organised, the engine wasn't as good as it could be and mm. had a, a tendency to, to overheat and yeah. to, to get damaged. Right, but I mean, that's, uh, that's British cars all over, though, isn't it? I mean, that's British cars in the 1970s, certainly. I mean, they were just terrible. British Leyland, yeah. show of hands, out on strike. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gone are the days. Yeah. But uh, obviously, British cars obviously can be excellent, but they oh, weren't. Yeah. Mm. It's just that we don't make Wasn't. them anymore. We, we make cars for other countries' companies. We don't make British cars anymore. I don't think there's... Is Morgan still British? I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, Bentley's now owned by... Or well, last it's... I knew was owned by BMW. Yeah, it's German, yeah. Yeah. Try, uh, Rolls-Royce, maybe. That's German. Still... That's German, too. That's oh. Yeah. So um, a Morgan or a TVR, maybe? I, is TVR still made? I think Morgan may be. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that. But there was one of those little uh, sport car makers that was bought up by some somebody from Azerbaijan, some a billionaire from one of those Eastern European uh, uh, countries. 
and they, um, they they rented a showroom where you couldn't stop out on the uh, the west way in uh, just I think beyond uh, Hammersmith and it was there didn't seem to be any way of actually stopping there but they they were all there in the window and nobody bought them because you, you couldn't actually <laughs> stop <laughs> stop at the I showroom <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, owned, owned by somebody from a country most of us couldn't find on a map. Exactly, yes. And definitely couldn't spell. No, that's right. Yeah, all right. Anyway. Good, good to talk to you, Andrew. Thanks for that. 0345 6060 Yeah, Aston Martin, that's not British anymore. What else have we got? I don't think there's any British cars. Oh, hands up in the air next door. Yes? I believe Lotus would still be British. Is it? I'm just checking. Mm, I don't know about that. I would say no, would be my guess. He is checking for us while we wait. Your call is important to us. An operative will be with you shortly. We are experiencing a large volume of calls. Hand up in the air again. Yes. Uh, it was recently bought by a Chinese oh. company. Oh. Yeah, I thought that it was uh, Chinese. No, I don't think we got anything. I don't think there's anything British that you would associate with being British that is actually British anymore. I think we sold the lot. Well, hell, I mean, when you sell your water, there really isn't anything left, is there? Crying out loud. And Thames Water, they just um, they, they just got uh, three billion pounds squirted up them at a probably a massive interest rate that us uh, lucky dopes who pay taxes will have to uh, stump up for. I bet, betcha, betcha, betcha. That's why your bills will be going up. It's because <laughs> it's because these geniuses can't make a profit on life's essential product sold as a monopoly. They can't make a profit on that. But, you know, we've got to pay these executives the uh, big money in order to get the very best. That's right. This text says, orange wine, are you thinking of iron brew? <laughs> no. No. No, I am not. This one, Nick, if you love movies where $100 million worth of stuff has exploded for your enjoyment, but you haven't watched more than 10 minutes of John Wick, you simply must watch that one and then chapters 2, 3 and 4. They are spectacular. Well, are they? Okay, well, maybe I was just in the wrong mood. I, I gave the, the first John Wick 10 minutes and it looked to me just like some bloke was just, just walking through a building shooting people. Didn't seem to have any story. There just wasn't anything to it. It was like... He's just shooting people all the time. And I thought, really, is this going to be like two hours of him just shooting people? A little smidge of a story would be nice. And so I gave up. Maybe I gave up a little bit too quick. All right, I'll put it on my list. 0345 Bracknell. Hello, James. Hello, good morning. James. I, you, you were talking about the clocks changing at uh, Big Ben, and literally, just as you were saying that, I was at the base of Big Ben... And they've already changed it. What? They've already changed it. It's gone back an hour already. Is that true? Yes. But I've that, just seen your photo. Yeah, a photograph. Okay, well, I must see evidence um, uh, straight away, if not sooner. Well, that seems alarming, because people rely on Big Ben to tell them what the time is, and now it is lying about that. Absolutely. It's blacked out, but it is, um, it's changed by an hour. Oh, they blacked it out. Right. I saw um, from up on high, there's a, there's a bar in a hotel near um, Trafalgar Square. And from the top, you can see Big Ben off in the distance. And about a year, or maybe it was a couple of years ago, in the middle of winter, Big Ben turned into a giant light show. The whole of the, the, the sort of upper end of the uh, clock where the dial is, but below the dial and to the top, they had LED lights all over it, and they went from red to blue to green, and, you know, all the colours of the rainbow. Groovy. And I only saw it once, and it wasn't part of a show or anything. It was like they were testing it out, and I never saw it again. Not even for uh, New Year's, but which, when I thought they were definitely going to use it, because why, why else would they install a light show on Big Ben and then not use it? But it's the only time I've ever seen it, and um, I wasn't drunk. And um, I saw it with my own eyeballs, and there were other witnesses there. In fact, I got pictures. 
And I should do it more often. Uh, well, yeah, they should try it out once in a while. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for the good news there, James. The uh, clocks have already gone back. You believe that? They've jumped the gun. They turned the lights out, and under cover of darkness, they pulled the clock right back again. They unhooked it and moved the handle uh, by hand. I've got no idea how they do that, but it's, uh, it's some way or other. It's one o'clock. Uh, Cole texts, Nick, you are so right about Mars Davis. I would suggest Maiden Voyage, Herbie Hancock, or Blue Train. John Coltrane, to use your, uh, <laughs> to lose your jazz genity too. <laughs> yeah. No, don't go, yeah, I mean, all of those are uh, excellent, of course, but we're talking about newbies. We're talking about people who uh, are approaching jazz thinking that they're not going to like it. So just ease yourself in, Mars Davis, Kind of Blue. It's the jazz album that people who don't like jazz like. And if you don't like that, then, uh, well, you just might as well hang up your headphones because the, there's, the, there's nothing that uh, anybody, even an expert, can do to help you. 0345 Jerry says, I think Elon Musk is trying to, is vying, rather, vying to get Agent Orange elected so everyone in the world will book one-way tickets to Mars on his rockets. Sort of Musk version of Ryanair. The outside toilets are a bit of a worry, but a small price to play to escape the orange man, says Jerry. Well, book me a one-way ticket as soon as it's available. Would you, would you go into space on a rocket provided by that man? No. No. <laughs> would, you, would you get into a cab in a car provided by uh, that man? No. No. Joan in Pantley says, I hate them too. Hate what? Read on and might find out. My son got one of their tablets through... Oh, those people. My son got one of their tablets through a well-known network. Nine hours and nine A company agents later. Oh, I get it, right. Nine hours and nine of the company's agents later, he was given the returns number that the network needed for them in order to cancel the contract and get something else. A, the company insisted on that process when a faulty tablet contract would have just been cancelled or an exchange given without all the rubbish. I've never had one of their products uh, either. I was very, very confused <laughs> from uh, Joan in Putney, but she's, she's going, going through an emotional period. Very, very upset about that whole tablet thing. I'm sorry to have brought it up. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on WhatsApp, it's the same number as the phone. 0345 6060 973. Don't forget to remind me to do the banter bounces. Youth movement, smoking outside, and Manchester United versus Manchester City. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. You know, some whack job can say this stuff and get away with it? This text says, Nick, I'm a bit confused. You mentioned Trump has his own Bible. Has he inserted himself inside it? He didn't need to. It's all about him. It's about a beautiful orange child who saved the world. He's done more for religion than anybody else. You know, nobody has done more for Christianity. Nobody has done more for religion of all type than me. <laughs> yeah, you're religious people, you're going to vote for Donald Trump. Okay, sure, why not? 
Yeah, just hold your nose and do it. Uh huh. Vicky in Cumbria says, I hope I'm not whining, but isn't having the extra hour of daylight in the morning, or it, it isn't, it isn't having the extra hour or day of daylight. Shall I start this again? No. I hope I'm not whining, says Vicky in uh, Cumbria. Hey, Vicky. Stop whining. But isn't it, it. Oh. Shall I start it again? No. I hope I'm not whining, says Vicky in uh, Cumbria. But it isn't having the extra hour of daylight in the morning or evening that bothers me. It's the whole changing about all the time thing. My body doesn't know if it's hungry or sleepy. And no sooner have I got used to the change, it changes again. Not to mention having, go, having to go around the entire house changing the time on all of my analogue clocks. Just choose a time and stick to it, says Vicky. And this is her not whining. Whinging and whining and moaning. <laughs> You can't possibly still be getting over the clocks going forward in the spring. And that's what I'm keeping um, in mind as we go into the dark. That you have to go through the winter to get the spring. And the spring is the most magical time of the year, isn't it? And you don't get that if you don't go through the uh, misery that we're about to be plunged into for the next... Uh, well, it's November, December, January, February... March. Five. Five months. Oh, no. Okay, and now I'm getting depressed again. <sighs> Highgate. Hello, Andrew. Oh, hi. I'm Alice. I've got a really good mind. Uh, oh, cars. Terrible, terrible line, Andrew. Can, oh, have, you got, have you got a landline? I don't have a landline. Can you not hear me? Oh, that's terrible. No, I'll oh, tell you what. We'll try, we'll try and call you back. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> the despair in his voice. He's got something very, very important to impart. <laughs> While we try and get uh, get him back, uh, let's talk to, uh, let's see now, Scarborough. Hello, Tracy. Oh, hello, Nick. Tracy. Thank you for call. Hello. Um, I was just wondering if you might be um, amused as I was about a, a conversation I had recently with my water company. So uh, uh, the um, emergency stopcock outside was inoperable, so I thought I was being helpful and letting them know. Mm. And they said that because there wasn't a flood, they wouldn't turn, you know, they wouldn't fix it. But if there was a flood, <laughs> they would come and fix it. So what I said, <laughs> right. isn't that a bit like if I said to someone, there's a fire door that's not working, yeah. and they would say to me, well, that's okay, because there's not a fire at the minute. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah, what, you, what are you complaining about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, 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 I thought it was... Written, and when I asked him why, <laughs> he said it was because um, so many people have been complaining that they've changed the policies so they don't have to come up oh, with Oh, yeah, problem more. solved. It's like um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people are shoplifting at uh, the moment and, uh, you know, it's, it's causing a crime wave. So all we have to do is simply make shoplifting legal, problem solved. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, and then if you wanted to um, escalate it, but they would look at it. So it's like them just changing the policies and then marking their own homework. It was like, oh, right, OK. <laughs> well, I am stunned. It just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? I know, I know, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I thought you might find that funny. Yeah, well, okay. thanks for that, Tracy. Cheers, my dear. <laughs> Ta-da, 0345 6060 973. We're the only country in the world, in history, that has ever sold off all of its water. It's most precious resource, without which life is not possible. And we sold it as a monopoly concern, debt-free. And the uh, evil people that hoovered it up said, thanks very much, we'll load it with debt, we'll borrow on the assets that you have essentially just given us, and then we'll give the money that we borrowed to ourselves. And you dopes can pay the interest. <sighs> thanks a lot, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good grief. It's, what a country, eh? I mean, you couldn't make it up. 
Nick says, uh, the Beatles' She's Leaving Home is such a beautiful song. As for jazz, my favourite artists are Louis Armstrong, Coleman Hawkins, Bix Beiderbecker, Chet Baker, Clifford Brown, Jerry Mulligan, and especially Sidney Bechet. Well, thanks for the uh, <laughs> thanks for the information there, Nick. Thanks for the list. Oh, let's try and get this guy back, see, uh, see if this line is any better. Highgate, hello, Andrew. Hi, is it clearer now, Nick? Yes, it is. Lovely. And uh, lovely to speak to you. I, I've got such a good mind, such a rough time I'm having. So by this time of night, I'm absolutely knackered. Um, and I wish I could make everyone laugh, which I normally can during the day. Let's see how it goes. So I'm doing some Nick Abbott practice to try to get my measure right so I can delight everyone before they go to sleep. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what okay, are you talking well, about? I'll try and expand on it. Thank you for making me even shyer than I already was. That's right. fine. I'm okay. So there was a lovely man talking about the Triumph Stag, was there not? Yes. And sometimes when someone sounds as lovely and marvellous and handsome as him, it's very hard when he's had a stag for 45 years to correct him about the designer. It just feels a bit sad. So I imagine sitting at a nice table with a pot of tea, a little bit of counselling, some breathing and some real love in the air, and then mm. gently break it to him. It's not Pininfarina. Well, Pininfarina, it's, it's the, all these subjects are interesting because because people want to say the correct thing and they mean well and so in a way it's acceptable because it's a nice Italian word it's a very proud design house wonderful they design Ferraris mainly and Peugeots mm -hmm. somehow you get these different things um, and the Triumph Spitfire and all of those amazing little cars that to a boy I thought were just silly British Leyland cars until you grow up it and you look at design and you realise they're I was going to say staggering like it's like a kind of pun on the tri Triumph Stag but actually, if you, if you look, the, so the man is right to say Pininfarina because it's just nice. It just sounds Italian. So that's OK. But gently, gently, with my respect and love to him, the designer is actually Giovanni Michelotti. Right. So Michelotti I'm... designed various things. And if people look these things up on the dreadful Internet, yeah. actually, you see some very beautiful shapes. So it's worth doing the research. Well, I've never heard of him. Michelotti. Um, from oh, what yeah. uh, was he, yeah, he? Did he just go under his own name or was he from a design house? That's a very good question. Thank you. He, he, thank you. He designed, <laughs> he went, these various people tart around a bit, around Turin and Milan, and yeah. they all love each other and know each other. Mm. And at some point, like a kind of Petri dish full of good bacteria, you get people who seem to be a, um, adherent to one particular design house, but they all know each other, you know? Like rock and roll musicians, you know, people from Queen, know people who know Bowie, who know Brian, you know. And, and it's all kind of a mishmash, so... So, yeah, so he worked for Bertone, I think, which oh, I used to right. think as a boy yeah. was called Berta, mm -hmm. and they did Lamborghinis. Yeah, yeah. So Lamborghini was Bertone, Pininfarina designed Ferraris, Michelotti did some other beautiful cars. I can't remember them all now because I'm a bit cream cracker at this time of night. And then you've got Zagato that designs very ugly sort of cars, but they're brilliant ugly cars. And then there's Scaglietti and there's Turing that did all the Aston Martins. Right. So well, that was, uh, really. that was a D... B, what's his name? Uh, David, David Brown, the Bra farmer. Right, yes. Another farmer, like Porsche, who made tractors. Well, Lam David no, Brown did. L Lamborghini. Tractors. And Lamborghini, yeah. Ferruccio Lamborghini was a tractor maker. I think yeah. he was a prisoner of war. And so all these things, and as far as being proud of this country is concerned, we've spoken before about how dreadful everything is and how Mercedes <laughs> have shafted Aston Martin through the back door with their AMG engines. So well, I, can't I don't know. Aston I mean, if, if you put the, uh, if, if you press the button that mark, that's marked go and the engine starts, well, that, that's, uh, that would be a departure for Aston Martin, wouldn't it? Well, it, you mean it would depart from the engine, which would fire out the back of the windscreen <laughs> <laughs> because of the build quality. I, I don't know, but what we should be proud of and uh, it is a remarkable... Uh, you see, the whole world comes to this country. There are some serious supercar makers at the moment. And where have they gone? Italy? Germany? Japan? No. They've come to us. And this should make us feel really proud as we go to sleep. Who, though? The, which the which company companies? I'm talking about go on. is called Cosworth. Oh, right, Cosworth. They are yeah. such an amazing uh, car company, and they have designed the V12 for the new Aston Martin Valkyrie, for a lot of the Aston Martin's pre-Mercedes engines, and this extraordinary uh, car. We make the most extraordinary car called the McLaren F1. And yes, I, I'm not sure that... Um that's a German engine. Yeah, I, I, just for the design of the car, I'm I'm trying to like I'm, it, but it's not no, really. It's not it's okay. really. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's exactly boring. right. It's, it's okay. Boring, yeah. but it's mathematically very successful. Yeah, I'm sure it is. 
And because it's like Lotus, in that Lotus, I don't want to say the P word, upset everybody on the racetrack because he built a tiny little box on wheels starting in a garage in Hornsey, next to Hornsey Railway Station. He upset Ferrari and everyone in Monte Carlo and everyone by these little cars that were so nimble, they won all the races. Well, I'll tell you what, Lotus now, whoever's doing the, the, yeah, whoever's doing the design now is doing a pretty bang-up job because uh, that new uh, 4x4... Lotus kind of looks a bit like the Lamborghini. Um, what's it? The uh, what's their four by four called? Uh, Lamborghini. Well, I don't care about it. I call it the Lamborghini <laughs> Anus. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that this time. No, you're I not. Think it's no, the, uh, Urus, I think. It's the Urus. Yeah, I think that's right. But the but the um, the the new <laughs> Lotus is a pretty good looking car, don't you think? It, it is, but Lotus is all about lightweight. So when Tesla had a Lotus Elise and put a battery in it, mm. it made this lovely little car that's lightweight, which is what all car design should be about. It should be about being lightweight. Yeah. Anyone can juggle with two balls. Anyone can put a battery the weight of a bus in a sports car. Mm. You need like sort of like, you know, iron tires to keep it up. <laughs> so the Tesla almost destroyed that little Lotus. The Tesla's not a car company. It's a battery company using cars right. to prototype their yeah. batteries. And so this Chinese uh, and, they, and, company, they look, and they look like cabs. I mean, why would anybody want to buy one of those? Or, or like eggs. They look very strange. And I, I'd like to ask a commission from the good man from South Africa to uh, redesign his cars. Yeah, they, they, to try and help him. cars look as weird as he is. Uh, well, Andrew, um, this has been very uh, interesting to people who like cars. But to people who don't, well, they, they may have tuned out over the last five minutes, but I certainly didn't. Thanks for that. They'll come back. God bless. All right, cheers, mate. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 60 60 973. Text 84850. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Come on, we're running late. <laughs> Kevin says, remember the clocks go back tonight. Yeah, I know that. Still very upset about it. I haven't got over it yet. Give me a couple of months. He says, if you're Jacob Rees-Mogg, the clocks go back to 1741. If you're Nigel Farage, you just say that the clocks... <laughs> <laughs> should go back to where they came from. <laughs> should go back to where they came from. I'm a nutcase. You certainly are. This text says, uh, you said manoeuvre, signal, mirror. Do you actually have a driving licence? It's mirror, signal, manoeuvre. No, it isn't. As any Audi driver will tell you, it's manoeuvre, mirror, finger. In that order. Let's have uh, Axmouth. Where's that, Suzanne? Axmouth. It's um, the harbour on the River Axe. Oh. Well, that sounds a delight. From, from Axminster going down to the coast. Ah. Lovely. I was very interested to hear your last chat talking about cars. I love cars. Mm. One one car make, and I'm sure they're not made anymore, but Bristol Motors were absolutely oh. beautiful cars. Well, they were odd-looking cars, weren't they? they? They used to have that big showroom near Earl's Court, didn't they? Exactly, and that lovely showroom. Uh, yes, massive. No, nobody ever went in there, as far as I could tell. I no, used to, you I, never saw it. No, no, never. They, they, were, they were incredibly expensive yes. even then. And I think if you want to buy one now, they're still incredibly expensive. They're beautiful cars, though. I'm not sure about that. They look always looked a bit clunky to me. Yeah, maybe they were of, a, of an age, but I still think... Uh, I've never ridden in one, but I've seen a few, no. and I still thought that they were sort of, you know... Anyway, I didn't phone you about that. I phoned you to say I was disappointed that you weren't on for an extra hour because the clocks went by. Oh, right. <laughs> no, I get out of here just in time. <laughs> um, going on about Trump, honestly, can you believe that they're even thinking of electing him again? No, it's I, that it's so close is just beyond belief. It just blows my yeah, mind. Americans that think that he's a good idea? Uh, they're, they're Americans who don't really think very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll sum it up for you. This is broad strokes, and um, I, I don't mean to, well, I'm, uh, to offend a little bit, but not a lot. But overall, the people who are going to vote for Kamala Harris are those who are the smart ones on the coasts, the intelligent ones, the people with college education. The people in the middle 
who do not have the wherewithal or the gumption or the intelligence to move out of the podunk towns that they were born into, the ones with no teeth and who uh, sit there uh, <laughs> strumming away uh, to uh, their, um, their mulleted friends. Those people are for Trump. <laughs> It's an IQ. Yeah, it's very, it's it, it, very concerning. Yeah, it's an IQ gap is essentially what it is. I love the poorly educated. Donald Trump said it the best. He said to a crowd of poorly educated people, he said, I love the poorly educated. And they whooped and cheered like he was complimenting them. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I love the poorly educated, he said, to a crowd of poorly he educated actually, people. He actually... He actually looks really unwell now. He, he does, like yeah. Sort of, um, he looks like he's sort of mogadoned up to the eyeballs or he, something. He it's looks sort of like wrong. a deflated balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he? Well, things, things can't get... Well, anyway, can they yes, get... They can. A, yes, they can. Yes, they can. But I think yeah, you'll be all right. anyway. you'll, you'll be all right in uh, Axmouth because... Um, yeah, no, I, we'll be, we'll, I'm going canoeing tomorrow. Newing? No, canoeing, canoeing. Oh, you're going canoeing. Right, yeah, on on the water? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Warning, warning. No, I wouldn't go anywhere near the water if I were you, Suzanne. Have you seen the news? <laughs> Oh, I mean, the, the pollution is a worry. The pollution yeah. is a worry. And we certainly suffer from it here. There's been l lots of warnings. We haven't had uh, Fergal Sharkey um, here yet, but I'm sure he'll get to here in the end. Yeah, he, Bless him. He, you are on his He's list. He's doing a really good job. He, he really is, is yeah. It. We appreciate it, Fergal Sharkey. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I um, uh, love uh, at least a, a half a dozen songs that you have uh, been responsible for, too. So, you know, there's that as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, good work, Suzanne. Um, uh, I, I wish you all the best. I would book that ambulance great, great before. Great show! You... Thank you for your thank you for your your humour and your incisive entertainment. And my perspicacity, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> book your ambulance before you hit the water, Suzanne. Trust me. Thanks for that. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. I'm not going to have time to do uh, most of these things, am I? I'll, I'll try to do the football one. But first, uh, let's take this call in Bodmin. Malcolm. Oh, hello, Nick. Yes, sir. A couple of big stories, big money stories. Mm -hmm. and then um, the third one, which which um, I split my mind briefly, but it will come back to me. Yeah. And it's it's this, um, you, you keep saying it, well, you, you, you say it, but you're only reading what's in front of you. And what? it's that the bookies in America are making Donald Trump the favourite. Yeah, that doesn't make no never mind because the people who are doing the betting right. are the billionaires who are behind Donald yeah. Trump. They're just yeah, trying well, to make it look as though uh, Donald Trump is easily yeah. going to win it so that when he doesn't, they will be able right. to uh, persuade his cult fans that uh, the thing has been stolen from them. I think I may mention this to you previously, but what is it that brings odds down, Nick? Pardon? What is it that brings odds on an event down? So, a football team. What brings the odds down? Uh, I'm not really into the... betting, but I would imagine it's the increased likelihood of it happening. Uh, uh, well, right, that's one thing. But the other thing is, more money on it. So the bookies think, hang on, there's something happening here. Right. Everybody thinks this team are going to win, and yeah. they probably will because they're good, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. Well, uh, one person bet 30 million on Trump. Right. And it, it, it is, as you said, it is literally a ploy that they're playing the bookies and mm -hmm. they're playing, more importantly, they're playing the media, Nick. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's who they're playing, yeah. Uh, they're, well, they're, they're playing the American public to make it appear as though Donald Trump is going to win it in a landslide yes. and, when he do, and when he doesn't, the, the, the stunned shock reaction is going to well, propel Donald Trump over yeah. any uh, complaints that uh, he actually didn't win. They'll just be able to blast through that because they'll say, look, look at all the betting. That, yeah. uh, that's proof. Yeah, but not only that, the theory is that the, the, the suckers, they think, well, if everybody is backing him, he's a winner. And, and Trump fans, they only like winners. He tells them he's a winner, therefore they back him. Well, that's the most extraordinary thing about Donald Trump because he has yeah. failed at every single yeah. business he's ever been in. Um, despite and, and in order to persuade people otherwise, he just tells them... I've been successful in every business I've been in. He has been a failure in every single business he's been in, apart from one, and that is the business of television. He persuaded the American public successfully that he was a success, and he wasn't. And then two other things, right? 
the very briefly, Nick, right? Uh, the one is, um, I mentioned to you a few weeks back, and it, it was about this stupid thing that Labour did in, in removing the heating allowance from old people. And I said, well, the, the stupid, all they had to do was say, we, 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 we thought about it, but we're not going to do it. Yeah. We're not going to take the money off old people. Right. So we're going to add that to the national debt. But I, I then went one further. I said, if I was Rachel Reeves, I would have said that this 20 billion black hole, I'm simply going to leave it on the national debt. I'm not going to tax anybody in the country anymore. Mm. Yeah, so there's that. Yes. But the, the final story, Nick, is this. Um, a certain host this afternoon, n- no names mentioned, and, and I'm not being horrible, but the host <laughs> who is the, the host who is rightward leaning, shall we say, right? And it, it was a male. Just as a bit of clarity. A male host said that the Conservatives left a positive balance after oh, God. Major and yeah. Thatcher, right? Right, yeah. Now, the, the, the woman not... Nick, they may well have done. But the point that the Tories and the right lie about is the fact that they left uh, a surplus. In other words, the country wasn't in debt as mm. it is now, $3 mm-hmm. trillion. What they did was they sold the gas. Yes. They sold the water. You're exactly right. They sold yes. the post office. You they should have called police. that show, Malcolm, not mine. It's a little bit late now. No, no, but it's, it's, it's pertinent with you because the, the thing is, Nick, people get sucked in and, and Labour gets sucked in with their own strategy. Yeah. And, and it, it, it is simply uh, the stories. Okay. Yeah, but like I said, you, uh, I yeah. understand what you're saying, Malcolm, but you should have called that show, not this one. Um, this text says, what about that story about Manchester City and Manchester United? All right, I'll see if I can squeeze it in. There's a prize-giving ceremony for the Ballon d'Or. It's called the Ballon d'Or. It marks the best footballers in the world. It's this week, and there's players nominated from Manchester City and Manchester United. Now, Manchester United have just been taken over partly by a billionaire. So, naturally, they're having to cut costs because, you know, billionaires aren't made of money. And so to get to the ceremony in France, Manchester City rented a plane to take their players and the associated staff there and back. And in order to save money, the billionaire-owned Manchester United asked their most fierce rivals, Manchester City, if they could send their players attending the ceremony on the plane that Man City had hired. What? Yeah, I know. Only somebody who knows nothing about football would even think of asking, right? And the answer came, yes, of course, we'll see you at the airport. Uh, no, <laughs> City said. No, 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 no. Of course they did. Manchester United asked rivals, Manchester City, if Alejandro Ganacho and Kobe Mainu could catch a lift with their party of eight nominees to the Ballon d'Or, only, be told to, only to be told that the flight was full. And sadly for Manchester United, they were informed that there was no room on the flight and alternative arrangements had to be arranged. And United are in the midst of a series of cost-saving measures following the arrival at the club of Jim Ratcliffe and his Ineos group earlier this year. Jim Ratcliffe, fun fact, is worth £29.6 billion. That's billion with a B, not million with an M. 29.6 billion. He would be Britain's second richest person, except he patriotically went to live in the tax haven of Monaco in a move that is estimated by some to have saved him uh, paying £4 billion in taxes. You know, which could have been frittered away on such inconsequential things like the NHS and the police and the schools. And, by the way, £4 billion is coincidentally the same amount that he paid to become a kingpin at Manchester United. <laughs> If you squinted and thought about it uh, just for a moment, you might think that we paid for it. And this is where it gets funny, because the stated reason for asking to catch a lift on Manchester City's plane for United's players was that United are wary of of their carbon footprint. (laughs) Ratcliffe owns the company Ineos, the petrochemicals giant, and they're concerned about their carbon footprint. Well, thanks for that. I needed a laugh. You know, now the uh, nights are closing in and all.